on the Georgia Southern Sports Network. From Learfield, Georgia Southern football is brought to you by Zaxby's, indescribably good for over 20 years. Snap, hold, placement, kick on the way. It is good! He got it! Georgia Southern football kickoff is just moments away. Now with a call of the game, here's Terry Harvin and the voice of the Eagles, Danny Reed. Eagle Nation, it is great to see you again on a 56 degree Saturday evening from South Carolina's Grand Strand. Second straight year, the Georgia Southern journeys to Brooks Stadium to take on the Coastal Carolina Shot of Clears. Before we talk more about this matchup, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to Georgia Southern Football on the Georgia Southern Sports Network, powered by Learfield. Ethan Confer back in our Statesboro studios this evening with Russ Brown and Frank Solkowski down on the sidelines in the booth. With Colin Lacey and my broadcast partner, Terry Harvin, my name is Danny Reed. Tonight, Georgia Southern takes its third shot at win number eight, which would likely mean a bowl game in 2018. As Georgia Southern takes the field, they'll be occupying the home stands right in front of us. Coastal Carolina, on the other hand, it's their third shot at win number six, which would make them bowl eligible for the first time in school history. But there's something more for Georgia Southern today. I know it's Coastal Senior Day. I know it's Military Appreciation Day. But there's something more important <laughs> for Georgia Southern. I don't like to use this a lot on broadcast, but revenge is going to be a factor today. And you cannot tell me that it won't be. No, I think it will be. We certainly know these two teams know each other well. We recruit against each other. Because as you all know, we do quite well in the state of South Carolina with recruits. So we know we go head to head. Their offensive coordinator is very familiar with Georgia Southern. and. Uh, certain things were said, I think, during the week. The roar in the background, if you hear that, is a motorcycle veteran group who is lined up in a gauntlet for the Coastal Carolina team to run through. It's not Danny and I doing a broadcast on the back of a Harley today. That'd be neat, though. That would be kind of neat. And as Coastal Carolina takes the field, Danny had uh, get Veterans Appreciation Day. And then we mentioned, Danny, there wasn't a whole lot of people here today. It's not a bad crowd. It's actually a little bit better than I anticipated. But the students are out for the Thanksgiving break. Certainly has an impact. And we've got to remind people that Coastal Carolina had to leave campus for almost a month with Hurricane Florence sweeping through the area earlier this season. That's they right. had classes earlier today, and this being the final day before their Thanksgiving break. So those that stuck around, they're certainly warriors. But as I look at the crowd, I think that there's more motorcycles on the field than there are fans in the stands. I think you may be right. And the good thing on Georgia Southern's as you were talking about bowls, the reason, obviously we need to win out for numerous reasons, but the reason the bowls are so interested in Georgia Southern is because of our fan base and how well we travel. We have a nice section or two of Georgia Southern blue and white over here, including the band that made the trip up, and a lot of alums that made the trip here to Coastal Carolina, so appreciate that. Coastal Carolina won the opening coin toss. And the shot to clears are to receive going right to left as you listen on the Georgia Southern Sports Network powered by Learfield. Just the fifth all-time matchup between the schools. Last year, Coastal ending Georgia Southern season with a 28-17 victory. That was a game that saw the Eagles fall behind 14-3, take a 17-14 lead early in the third quarter on a touchdown pass to Ellis Richardson. But Coastal used a fake punt to reseize momentum. Malcolm Williams, their fine wide receiver, had two long touchdown receptions, and Georgia Southern could not stop that Coastal run game. You're going to have two different versions of an option-based attack. Of course, we know what the Eagles are going to do out of the gun on the pistol under Bob DeBest, but under da Jamie Chadwell, they like to do more of the dive. Seldom do they pitch the football, but it's more of a front side pulling guard play. They call it the belly G play, where they use that front side guard to either kick out a defensive end or lead up through the hole. And Georgia Southern spent all week long on its run fit so they do not get defeated by that run game like they did in 2017. Down to the field quickly with Russ Brown. Russ, with the sun finally descending, give us an idea of how it feels at field level. It's cold. Um, the sun <laughs> has gone down. We, we knew that was going to happen. Uh, it's a nice day. It was a beautiful day, blue skies. A lot of rain in the Peach State this week, so I know a lot of people welcome the side of the sun. 
And for uh, some of us that live further inland, it sure was nice to wake up and see the Atlantic Ocean this morning. But as the sun has dipped down now, uh, it is set. It is behind a thin layer of clouds. And as it did, the uh, temperature started dropping immediately. So it's going to be a chilly night, no doubt about it. It was much warmer than I expected it was going to be. I brought a lot of warm clothes, but Russell's spot on. As soon as the sun went down, it has certainly gotten colder as we continue to uh, look at some activity in the end zone. And I was able to wake up early to see the sunrise on the ocean and the beach while some of you were just getting back. Folks, the reason why we have not gotten underway yet, we have a situation in the right side end zone from our vantage point. It looks like one of the members of the Coastal Band or cheerleading squad got injured during the pregame introductions. He has finally been helped to his feet. They have a stretcher in the end zone. I don't know if they're going to need to put him on that wow. stretcher. He's but wobbly. Yeah. Man, that's a little bit scary. They do wheel the stretcher off, and the individual is being helped off the field by several members of the Coastal Carolina game day staff. Don't see that happen very often. Hope he's okay as the referees get in position and Georgia Southern comes out of the field getting ready to kick off. And Good vantage point we have here. It's a beautiful day for football. Beautiful day, period. Well, it's nice that the sun has finally set, <laughs> so we're not looking at the sun, period. We That's can actually right. see the surf turf. We can see some of the fans filing in. Many of them are wearing black and teal and a little bit of bronze. Georgia Southern's blue and white occupying a good portion of the home side stands. Remember, because the press box is on the east side, the sun setting means that it's directly in Georgia Southern's face. Though since it has set, the Eagles are on the home side, coastal, on the visiting side, similar to what Western Carolina had at E.J. Whitmire Stadium during the SoCon days. It's also worthy to note that Outlaw, that running back they have, is going to be out today, but their backup, he, he's produced 643 yards himself. So Tyler Bass to kick off for Georgia Southern. We're underway from the Grand Strand. That goes over Kion Tyler's head, seven yards deep in the end zone. And Coastal Carolina begins at the 25-yard line with Swanee native Fred Payton at quarterback. He makes his fourth consecutive start, a guy that was supposed to redshirt this year, but because of injuries to Kilton Anderson and Bryce Carpenter, Payton has been thrust into the forefront. And, and Payton hasn't given up the starting lineup, uh, starting job either. Even when Anderson came back, Anderson's now the backup, and he's the senior. Coastal Carolina from the right hash, first and 10 at its own 25. First play of this ball game is the Eagles set up in their classic 3-4. Lane Acton gets the start at outside linebacker. There's that belly G handoff off the right side, and it doesn't go for very much to Marable. Georgia Southern with a tackle after a gain of a yard. Second down and nine at Coastal's 26. They do go tempo. Jamie Chadwell's been using this for years, including his stint as a head coach at Charleston Southern. Already locking horns between one of the offensive linemen and Quan Griffin right out of the gate. Second down and nine for Coastal at its own 26. A gun for Peyton, four wides. Die fake left, throwing out right. Caught initially and up past the 36-37 yard line for a first down. Nice play call, good execution. Brinson left his receiver to come up. Being tracked by the outside linebacker, Randy Wade Jr., not able to keep up with him and moves the chains. Reception for Shadell Bell, the grad transfer out of Clemson, just his sixth catch all year. Big fellow, though. Nader, native of Decatur, went to Columbia High. They're the Eagles. Coastal up to its own 38 first and 10. Split backs behind the shotgunning Payton. Spinning out to the left, it's an option. Payton keeps up to the 40. Avoids Josh Boone, 45-yard line. Another Coastal first down. A gain of 11 to his own 49. Wade and Quan Griffin get downfield, but Payton moves those chains with a couple of sweet interior moves. Nice move, good, uh, several missed tackles. Reese just out, Randy Moon came up, couldn't wrap him up. Athletic quarterback. There. Twins out to the near side with Miller and Williams. Williams killed Georgia Southern last year with four catches and two touchdowns, 120 receiving yards. 13-35 in the first quarter, scoreless, as Payton changes the play at the line of scrimmage. From Coastal's 49, Johnson applies pressure near side. Hand off the right side for James. He plows into Georgia Southern territory. And the whistle finally blows as the progress is stopped at the Eagle 48. That's a gain of three yards to Marcio Reese. Senior linebacker makes the tackle. Really a generous three yards as well. I thought we stopped him before there. He must have just got forward before pushing him back. Coastal runs for more than 220 yards a game. That's fourth in the league and top 30 nationally. Option-based attack, Jamie Chadwell looks at these games as personal games against Georgia Southern for a lot of different reasons. 
Tight end of the ball game is McFarland on the right. Twins left on second down and seven at the Eagle 48. Payton to throw left out of the backfield. Marable makes the catch, but a fine job by Chris Harris. He tripped him up after a gain of only one to the Georgia Southern 47. It's third down and six for the shot of clears. That was set up because Vildor did a good job in locking man down the sideline. Also, we had the crease covered, so we had to go to his third option, which was in the flats. Harris did a good job of being in position and getting that leg tackle. All right, three, four defense, but for the most part, we're walking up a linebacker on a line of scrimmage to make it look like a 4-3. So Randy Wade, for the most part, looks like he's playing a defensive end position. Coastal 44% on third downs this year. This is third and six at the Eagle 47. Payton, a drag route coming left, caught at the Georgia Southern 40, first down inside the 35 and down to the 30. That's Kion Tyler, missed last week because of a groin injury, comes up with his 21st catch of the year. Reese brought him down after a gain of 17. Came right out of the backfield like he was throwing a block and then cut right in front of Reese, not able to keep up with him. They're going to actually spot the ball at the 29-yard line. So once again, they're 44% on third down, and they've been very successful on that this season. A well-placed throw by Fred Payton. He's 3 of 3 for 31 yards on the drive to three different receivers. Trips right, pistol formation. There's the toss play to Marable running right from the Eagle 29. Ecton gets blocked on the edge. Ecton, though, helps out Brinson on the tandem tackle as Marable. Ends up getting dumped at the 26. That's a gain of three. Georgia Southern changing up its personnel with C.J. Wright, Ty Phillips, and Quan Griffin all coming in. Whole new defensive line. This is the eighth play of the drive for Coastal Carolina to start it off on the 25-yard line. This time possession team. Sorry, Danny. Just under four minutes in from Coastal, Shauna Clears going right to left at the Eagle 26, second down and seven. Two backs in the gun with Peyton, James on the left. Marable comes out of the backfield. They want the swing route. They hit it earlier this drive, makes the catch at the numbers. Inside the 20-yard line, got cracked hard near the 17. Chris Harris made the stop, but another first down for Coastal. That's already their fourth of the drive. And again, the second time they've been able to get the edge with that swing route to C.J. Marable, the former Presbyterian College Blue Hose. Across the middle, in the flats, running the ball. Right now, everything's working for Coastal Carolina. Eight plays this drive. Four runs, four passes. Peyton is 4 of 4 for 40 yards. Twins right press coverage near side. Peyton throwing towards the deep middle, incomplete. Vildor was awfully close to pass interference as it was incomplete intended for Javon Hiley. Second and 10 from the 17. Watching the replay. Good pass right on the money. Uh, Vildor did a good job. He was on his back a little bit, but certainly not enough for a flag to be thrown. Kendall's only allowed one touchdown pass all season. Rightfully ranked as one of the top cornerbacks in the country. Tenth play of the drive for Coastal. No score, 10-21 first quarter. Two wides each way on second and 10 from the 17. Left hash as Peyton claps the hands, throwing left side incomplete. A little bit too tall for Hiley again. Cracked from behind by Vildor. It's third and ten after these back-to-back -back incompletions after starting Terry four out of four. And remember their field goal kicker, 12 of 15 on field goals this year, 27 of 30 from PAT, so he's had some issues in there. And that's not far from the distance where they are right now, so if we can stop them. We'll give up three here, but you're talking about 12 plays right now. This is the 11th play of the drive. Coastal, an excellent red zone team, but Georgia Southern on the verge of getting off the field. Third and 10 at the Eagles 17. Coastal with two wides right, two men in the backfield with Peyton as the play clock ticks to two. Peyton claps the hands. It's an option right. Pitch behind the line of scrimmage. Marable, James to block for him inside the 15, down around the 10 before Trevor Ream. Fleem got his arms around the shoulder frame. The official spot is just inside of the 10. Coastal needing a good two yards for the first, but I don't see the kicking team coming on the field just yet. I would. I'd be surprised if they did kick it. Coastal Carolina on fourth downs are 67%. Yeah, that's number on one in the down. league, Terry. They're going for it. Twins left. Payton in the shotgun. This is fourth and two at the nine. Two tight ends in, shifting off to the left. James in the backfield as the play clock is down to four. Here's the snap to Payton. Hands to James, cutting back right. 
and I believe he has the first down to the Georgia Southern six-yard line. That little jump cut back to the middle, ran into the wall that was Chris Harris, but another fourth down conversion after a couple of third down stops earlier in the drive. That was a big hit by Harris, but James hung on to the football to set up first and goal. You know, a spot of the seven-yard line. Again, a 13-play drive in the mid works here, going on six minutes. Right this, out of the gate. This is what Coastal does. They are eighth in the country in time of possession, nearly 34 minutes a game. On first and goal from the six, straight handoff through the center of the Eagle defense. Tomarcio Reese making the stop on Marable. Down to the two-yard line for a four-yard pickup as the clock now shows 8.48 and turning in this first quarter. There's no score because this is the opening drive of the contest. They usually have about a seven-minute advantage on time of position, possession versus their opponents. Coastal slowing down the tempo momentarily, but not huddling. A wide each way, tight end right, Isaiah Likely. Payton telling James where to line up, just to his right. Again, the play clock running down to five on second and goal from the two. Miller comes in motion to left wing, hand off to James through the middle, reaching for the goal line, but the Eagles push him backwards. Josh Moon doing that. No gain back to the two. Third down and goal upcoming for Georgia Southern's defense. They couldn't get off the field last time, but this is a shot, you would think, to make them kick a field goal. Granted, if Coastal doesn't get it here, they may go for it again. They're going to say the two, but just between the one and the two-yard line, closer to the two, granted, but you're right, Danny, I don't see him kicking a field goal here. Not after... 15 or 16 play drive. It's a coastal offensive line that has all five starters back from a year ago, but left guard Jack Franklin is expected to miss his third straight game. Brock Hoffman, the right guard, a former Georgia Southern recruit. Third and goal inside the two. They fake the dive right. Peyton dumping it off left. That's going to be a touchdown. They throw it to the tight end, Isaiah Likely. Third touchdown of the year, and what a drive by Coastal. They take up half of the first quarter clock in 15 plays. They're up 6-0. That was an extremely well-called drive as Peyton goes 5 of 7 through the air. And he just tossed his sixth touchdown of the year. Well-called and well-executed. Absolutely. Very diverse, too. Massimo Biscardi on for the extra point out of Downington, Pennsylvania in the southeastern portion near Philadelphia. Offsides. That flag comes in, but this is offsides as the PAT is actually no good, but he's going to get another shot at this. I think it might be called on us on the on the far side. Brinson, perhaps, got a little too excited over there. Was Here's it? the call. The result of the kick is no good. We will kick. All right, I'll interpret that. <laughs> yeah, his, he the, missed it. His, well, his mic kept cutting out. Interestingly enough, Coastal a week ago had a penalty on Arkansas State. When they moved it to the one, they went for two and got stopped. But it looks like they will try to kick this one. Biscardi did just miss, but the offside gives him a mulligan. We mentioned earlier he had three misses, PATs on the year. That would have been his fourth. The punter, Oberson, as the holder, puts that down quickly. This has better trajectory, and that's through. Seven and a half minutes off the first quarter clock. Coastal Carolina, a 7-0 lead on the touchdown pass from Peyton to the tight end, Isaiah Likely. From Conway, South Carolina, this is Georgia Southern Football, powered by Learfield. You're listening to the Georgia Southern Sports Network, powered by Learfield. Carolina on its senior day took up seven minutes and 30 seconds with that game opening drive, converting once on third down, once on fourth down. In fact, they actually converted twice on third down as the final play of the drive was a third and goal from the two on a rollout pass to the left. Fred Payton dumps it off to the tight end, Isaiah Likely. The two-yard touchdown capped a 15-play march and gives Coastal a 7 to nothing lead as they try for bowl eligibility for the third consecutive game. They have home losses in a row to Appalachian State and Arkansas State, two games where they really weren't that competitive. But they came out that first drive. They ran the football. They had a controlled passing game. And they pretty much went right down the field against whatever Georgia Southern decided to throw at them. Eight runs, seven passes. That's balanced. I'd say so. Five first downs, as Danny mentioned, they were two for three on third downs, and they were one for one on fourth down. And they ate up an awful lot of clock there. If there's an opening drive you'd like to have, you'll take that all day long. They hit people in the flats, in the seams, across the middle, attempted to go deep. 
costly penalty that would, would have given us that point. Sometimes Biscardi trades off the KO duties with Miles Prosser, but Biscardi does have this teed up. Wesley Kennedy deep for Georgia Southern with his heels clicking off the bronze end zone. Now Georgia Southern hasn't had the football yet. They have a chance to make their statement inside this renovated Brooks Stadium. This is a short kick. Kennedy approaches, takes it from the seven near side hash. Moreland throws the lead block. Kennedy up the got 30, breaks far side. Coastal walls him up, broke two more tackles. Kennedy to the 35, to the 40, and up to the 42-yard line. Kennedy with a run back of 35 yards. That's as good as he has looked running back the football in weeks as reserve linebacker James Heft may have prevented a touchdown. Certainly did. Great field position for the Eagles. Now let's see what we can do with it. And what Kennedy did that was so special on that, was able to break tackles. See what the Eagle offense does with Kennedy aligning slot left. Mashad wide left getting the starter receiver. Ransom near right. Ellis Richardson, the senior, is the H-back. Near the right tackle, Brian Miller. Shy words at quarterback. Wesley Fields the running back with 722 in the quarter. It's first and 10 for the Eagles at their 42. Speed sweep right. Wesley Kennedy unable to turn the corner, but a four-yard reception up to the 46. Middle linebacker Teddy Gallagher, who's really emerged due to an injury in their back seven, made that stop. Get out of California. What speed he just showed, because I actually thought we were going to be able to turn the corner. And from the middle linebacker position, he was able to get to the corner, to the edge, to make that tackle. But it was able to pick up four yards, though. Goes down as Kennedy's 10th catch of the year in his first in the last three weeks. Two backs with Fields and Garrett behind Wirtz. Second down and six, Eagles at their 46. Fields on the dive, splitting through Heft and churning those legs. He's up close to a first down over midfield. The spot is just shy of the 48, which means the third down and about a sneeze going to be necessary to move the chains. We talked about the success that Coastal has had on third down conversions. Well, their opponents on third downs have had a lot of success as well. Opponents are 47% on third down against Coastal's defense. Malik Murray into the game slot left. He's going to get a lot of PT tonight. Tight ends Brown and Richardson shifting to the left of the line. Third and less than a yard at the Coastal 49. It's a dive play again for Fields. Ooh. I'm not sure. Attempted to break over right guard. C.J. Brewer out of Bowden is... At the bottom of the pile as Fields gets held back to his feet, they have already signaled fourth down. That is a good foot shy of the first, but I don't think the Eagles punt here. Well, you also got to go back to Gallagher again. I think he made that hit, and you notice how he wraps up on that legs and just yeah. keeps pulling him back. All right, the ball is just inside of the Coastal 49. The Eagles need the 48 for the first. We actually lost a little bit on that. Eagles are 4 of 10 on fourth downs this year, trailing 7-0, 535 in the first. Richardson aligns on the right against an eight-man box. Logan Wright gets the die first out. He's got guys on his back, plenty more. Down to the Coastal 42 for a seven-yard run. What do you do when you need a little bit? You give it to the 225-pounder and let him put Coastal on skates. Took it right off tackle the right side and did a good job of holding on to the football and barreling through. Cold night like this, somebody like Logan Wright is going to be even more difficult to bring down. Coastal took the opening drive of the game, 15 plays for a touchdown on the pass to Likely. They're up 7-0. Diamond head formation around Wirtz in the shotgun with Fields, Wright, that's Logan Wright, and Monteo Garrett with him, two wides. High snap, Wirtz pulls it down, hands to Monteo Garrett, arcing left and behind the block from Cooper. But only a gain of a yard to the Coastal Carolina 41, second down and nine. The linebacker Silas Kelly, who's missed time with a shoulder injury, made that tackle. Substitutions come in the ball game. It looked like Monteo Garrett hit a wall. Well, Monteo only had one carry all of last week against Troy. That was that 29-yarder in the first quarter. Didn't touch the ball on the ground the rest of the day. Did have one catch. Second and nine at the Coastal 41. Three wides with Najee Thompson in the slot. He motions into the backfield. Logan Wright gets the carry. Wurtz took a big shot behind the line of scrimmage from Gunter. Logan Wright inside the 40 down to the Coastal 37 for four, arranging a third down and five as we cross to the 410 mark of the quarter, down 7 nothing here in Conway. Shy did take a shot, and he was a little bit gimpy after that play and talking with the man in the white hat about whether that was a appropriate hit I guess I should say but he took a pop appropriate probably not but for coastal essential yes oh I, yeah, I don't blame him. 
Eagles break the huddle quickly, still 10 on the play clock. Third and five at the shot, 37. They go left to right towards the field house on the left hash. Kennedy motions out to the left, now back around the formation. Works on the handoff, fields, big hole left side, 30, 25. Field stumbles, and he's inside the 20 for a Franklin first down. He runs for 18 yards. Derek Bush, the far side corner, prevented that from being six. Yes, he did. He fell. He came back off the block and was just able to trip fields up. Great play call. Counter. Beautiful. Every week, Bob DeBest shows you something new about this offense, and I still think that there's only about half the playbook in. We continue to add personnel, and I think you'll see more and more of it. Darion Anderson into the game wide to the right side. Numbers, this is first and 10 at the shot of clear, 19. Richardson tight right, Kennedy in motion, high snap. Kennedy actually catches the snap running left, but he got caught up to and wrangled at the 21-yard line by the linebacker James Heft. The Eagles are lucky they only lost two yards because that snap went through Wirtz's hands and popped into the air, but Kennedy, who was coming around the formation, caught it and only lost two. Man, I got to tell you, <laughs> looking at that, Ellis Richardson was, was aware of what was going on, could have thrown that block. Got very lucky there, Kennedy. 2.35 and turning in this first quarter. Coastal leads 7-0. This is only the second drive of the game, period. Shots in the 4-3 defense. This is officially second and 13 at the 22. Wirtz, true option. Left skips inside a man. Shy had a shot, but he stumbled on his own volition. Back down to the shot to clear 17-yard line. Wesley fields through the block to open up the hole. That was a design pitch play, but Shy saw the middle come open. And now the Eagles looking at third down and eight. That was a touchdown right there. Yeah, I think so. Goodness gracious. Another third down for the Eagles needed. This will be the third one on this drive alone. Eagles break the huddle with four wides, two each way. Kennedy slot right. Third down and eight at the shot of clear 17. Trailing 7-0 late first quarter. Wirtz hands to Fields right up the middle. Fields inside the 10, but a flag on the play as Wesley actually gained the first down to the eight. But that looks to be in the area of offensive holding. Yeah, costly penalty is going to back us up if they threw it on Jacob Cooper. Yeah, he's the like. one that wasn't the happiest. That came from the back judge. So he obviously saw it right away. There's a three official conference taking place. Left hash down around the 15. If Fields picked up the first down, well, they're not moving the football back. I wonder if... Not sure here. Let's, let's get the call from Kyle Olson. Personal foul. Shot block. Offense. Number 60, 75. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Third down. Just a high-low block. They called Cooper and Rainey who were betwixt in the middle after Fields picked up the nine-yard run. With these, with these two offenses and the history of option between the two of them for a chop block call, I guess we shouldn't be surprised, right? What a costly penalty. That's the second one on the Eagles. The first penalty was on an extra point that he missed. This one's going to back us up to just shy of the 30, third down and forever. Third down and 20 from the Coastal 29. Clock moving again, down to 118 in the first. Garrett motions out of the backfield, works to throw, two-man pressure, screen play Ellis Richardson, but the shot of clears had that bottled up, only a two-yard play. That's a big pop from C.J. Brewer out of Bowden. And now you're looking at Tyler Bass on a chilly evening with a long field goal try coming up to get the Eagles on the board. Georgia Southern used the screen a couple of times last week against Troy, but Coastal had that very well scouted. They did, especially up the middle, which is exactly where Richardson turned. He went inside. The outside may have been open. He went straight in the inside out of instinct. Bass left hash from 44. Bowerly holds it. Langan snaps it. This to cut it to 7-3. First two parts are true. Bass with plenty of length, and he's got it. What a weapon Tyler Bass is. He is now 13 of 15 on the year. And a timeout on the field with 34 seconds left in the first quarter. Both teams with lengthy drives of more than seven minutes. But Coastal has a 7-3 to three lead. This is Georgia Southern football powered by Learfield. You're listening to the Georgia Southern Sports Network powered by Learfield. 34 seconds left in the first quarter. Another lengthy drive for an offense. This time, though, Georgia Southern only nets three on Tyler Bass's 44-yard field goal. But Terry Harvin 
at least the Eagles were able to respond after Coastal began the game with a 15-play touchdown drive. One for three on third downs, one for one on fourth down. We ran 11 plays, averaged 4.2 yards per play. That was a 12-play drive, 31 yards. Started off with a great kickoff return by Kennedy that got us to the 42-yard line. We are able to pick up 31 yards before we stalled. We ate up six minutes and 48 seconds of the clock. And then Tyler Bass, Mr. Dependable, comes in with a 44-yarder and splits the uprights to make the score 7-3 to three with 34 ticks left to go in this opening quarter. That was your forward scoring drive. Here at Georgia Southern, we go all out, just not on game, not just on game day, but every day. And the same is true with the Ford F-150, the official truck of the Georgia Southern Eagles. Bass's 16th career field goal of 40 plus, three shy of second in school history. And this kickoff is out of Horry County and out of the back of the end zone here in Conway. Down to Russ Brown. Russ, what are you seeing from Georgia Southern on both sides so far? Well, on the defensive side of the football, Vic Cabral, the defensive line coach, was telling his guys in the huddle, just, be, you know, stay aware on the back side, watch out for the cutbacks. But all in all, they felt like the defensive effort was pretty good. Offensive side of the ball, Coach Hudson really challenging his offensive line, especially Curtis Rainey, just to stay in the game. And, and it's about not, not necessarily effort, but just staying focused on your assignment. So uh, on both sides of the ball, it's really – about the lines of scrimmage on the sideline right now. Timeout on the field, 7-3 Georgia Southern trails with 34 ticks left in the first. This is Georgia Southern football powered by Learfield. You're listening to the Georgia Southern Sports Network powered by Learfield. Waiting for the first play of Coastal Carolina's second drive of the evening. Shot it clears, leading Georgia Southern 7-3. A two-yard touchdown reception for Isaiah Likely. Finished off a 15-play drive to begin the ball game. Eagles on their first possession converted on third down and fourth down. Actually, at one point, we're inside the red zone before a 15-yard penalty for an illegal cut block. On a third down play in which Wesley Fields gained a first down, it ended up netting Tyler Bass a 44-yard field goal. Score currently sits at 7-3, to three. so we've seen both offenses chew clock, both offenses score. See if that Eagle defense that's been really challenged these last couple of weeks and those losses to ULM and Troy, if they can step up and get the football back quickly against a team in Coastal that isn't efficient, but they are going to keep the football away from you. Alex James in the backfield with QB Fred Payton. He's expected to get many of the snaps tonight. Payton on the dive right. James, he actually arcs this around. Rashad Bird to the corner, 30, 35. Freeman catches up, ah. rips him out of bounds. He fell down Ooh. near the back of the coastal bench, but I don't believe there was a personal foul. I think the natural momentum carried him in and one of the support staff members for the Shauna clears. That's a 14-yard run for James and a first down for Coastal. That was, I, I thought that was going to be a flag, and it probably should have been. I, we got away with one there. I think he rode him a little bit too far in there. Then the other question to that is how do you let him beat you to the edge like that? Got to be out there. That's the longest run of the season for Alex James, 14 yards. Should be the last play of the quarter. Tyler motions on first and 10 from the 39. Eagles bottle up this dive to James. Ecton, Bird, and Phillips all wrap him up after a gain of one to the 40. That's the end of one from Conway at Brooks Stadium. It's the Shauna Clear 7, the Eagles 0. More from the Grand Strand in just a moment, powered by Learfield. You're listening to the Georgia Southern Sports Network, powered by Learfield. Three lead for the Coastal Carolina. Shauna clears here from Brooks Stadium in Conway. We take a look on the out-of-town scoreboard. Appalachian State just gone final. It's a 45-17 victory for the Mountaineers over the Panthers of Georgia State. Arkansas State all over ULM. 31-17 up in Jonesboro. Tight one over at Veterans Memorial Stadium in Troy, Alabama as the Trojans lead 9-0 over Texas State with 6.37 to go in the third quarter and about to start the second quarter of action down in the bayou as Louisiana Lafayette leads over South Alabama 10 to nothing. A reminder that the regular season closes next week up at Turner Field as Georgia Southern battles Georgia State. Looking to snap a three-game losing streak in that series. Coverage from the Pete Van Weeren broadcast booth beginning at noon, kickoff at 2 p.m. A rather unconventional first quarter in that both teams really only had one drive. I know Coastal ran a couple of plays at the end of the quarter, but Coastal added for seven and a half minutes. Georgia Southern had for 648. It's still going back to which defense is going to make that first stand and then which offense is going to be able to make that counter punch. Hopefully we get a turnover. That certainly would help uh, flip it for us a little bit there. You know, thinking back on the scores that Colin was given earlier, Arkansas State continues to win and ULL wins. 
That's a crazy West side because you're going to have three teams at four and three on the West division. The Wild West, is that too easy? That was too easy. I did walk right into that, I know. Coastal retakes the field now going from left to right towards the Josh Norman Fieldhouse. He gave $1.5 million for the construction of that fieldhouse, the current all-pro for the Redskins. Middle of the hashes from their own 40, second down and nine. Payton in the gun, fake the dive left. Eagles pressure Payton. He breaks through one, but Rashad Bird wrapped up the right ankle and pulled him to the ground at the line of scrimmage. No gain for Payton, known more for his feet than his arm. But what form by Bird to force third down and nine? He actually lost about a half a distance of a football there. It kind of looked like a busted play in this. Yeah. Good coverage downfield, by the way. We were locked up in man down the sideline. He had no one to throw it to. They substituted, so the refs give us the opportunity to do the same. And Georgia Southern sends in seven new guys, and no defensive lineman is in a stance. Can the Eagles get their defense off the field? 7-3, they're down, 40 seconds into the second quarter. Play clock to five, third and nine from the 40. Peyton looks to the left, play clock to one. They barely got the snap. Eagles drop into a full zone. Peyton looking left, caught in the Georgia Southern end of the field. In between the hashes and the numbers, it goes to Jeremiah Miller. And a first down to the Eagle, 45. It's a pass of 15. Gosh, great look. We fell back, looked like we were bringing the house. Fell back in coverage. He threw it in coverage. Receiver able to make the catch. Miller had his first career touchdown last week. Three catches in the loss to Arkansas State. That's a big one for Coastal. At the Eagle 45, first and 10 left hash. Play fake middle. Peyton deep shot. Middle incomplete. He wanted his tight end bell up the seam, but Freeman had gotten back in coverage. Second down and 10 for the teal clad Coastal Carolina Shauna Clears. It's a good play call, too, just not able to execute on it. Freeman did a good job, good play action pass. That's the very play that's given the Eagles so many problems for the last four years. And it's a look similar play to what we've given problems to others on, where we popped them deep for a touchdown. It's a signature play of Georgia Southern, actually. That's like Herman Barron pulling the ball in, <laughs> Delano Little pulling the ball in. They bring back some memories. Big hop. <laughs> Second and 10 at the Eagle 45. Peyton deep shot right sideline. That's caught as Georgia Southern's defender Freeman fell down. Kion Tyler has it inside the Georgia Southern red zone and down to the 19. That goes for 26 to Kion Tyler, the fastest of the coastal receivers. If Freeman stays up, I don't think that pass even gets thrown, but he stumbled out of the break. He did great, great route by the receiver, too. Was able to stop and cut immediately to the sideline, and when he did that, that's when Freeman lost his footing. 13-18 in the second quarter. Coastal leads 7-3, and they're at the Georgia Southern 19, first and 10. Out of the gun, the dive to James. Skips off to the left, carves up the interior inside the 15, and ends up going down at the Georgia Southern 12-yard line. James on a simple dive, gains seven yards. I think back to a year ago when Coastal's youthful offensive line tore Georgia Southern up in that season finale. Eagles want revenge in that respect as well, but so far, Coastal's been able to handle them. It's still fairly young offensive line when you look at four starters and sophomores, and one's a junior, but an awful lot of playing time last year. Took it off left tackle, was able just to kind of cut back and forth to pick up the yardage. Trip spread out to the left, ball in the middle of the field on second and three at the Eagle 12. Tyler comes in motion, spinning handoff to James Wright. Josh Boone stuck his nose in. Good form tackle with Reese assisting. That's no gain. Back to the line of scrimmage. Third down and three at the Eagle 12. Coastal, though, success on third down so far. They're three out of four. They are three out of four, and I would not be surprised if this was two down territory anyway. Might be even closer to three yards there. That way you have that ball spotted. Yeah, the nose is just outside of the 12, near side hash. Coastal a 7-3 lead with 11.57 and a half. Third and three at the 12, Eagle showing blitz. Here's the high snap. Payton dropped it, ends up just covering it up back at the 18. So both teams have had mishandled snaps. I think that was a catchable snap, and Payton just took his eye off of it. Now you're looking at Biscardi to re-extend this lead for Coastal. That, that's a loss all the way back to the 18-yard line. And now instead of going for it on fourth down, they are going to attempt a field goal. Again, he's 12 of 15 on field goals, 28 of 31 on PATs. We've blocked and gotten pressure before. They're going to spot this ball just at the 25-ish yard line, so 35-ish. 
Biscardi, 9 of 10 on field goals inside of 40 this year. Georgia Southern has blocked one. Play clock to two. There's the snap and hold. Kick has height. It has distance. And it's good. Coastal now leading at 10 to 3 with 11.05 to play in this second quarter. That finished off a 10-play drive, 57 yards, but the drop snap on third down prevented Coastal from making that a larger lead. Timeout from Conway. We'll be back in just a moment. This is Eagle Football, powered by Learfield. You're listening to the Georgia Southern Sports Network, powered by Learfield. Possessions in this ball game, three scores. Coastal Carolina, though, up 10-3 on Georgia Southern after Massimo Biscardi was true from 35 yards out on the right hash. Ten plays, 57 yards in four minutes, 29 seconds. Terry, after a couple of large chunks earlier in that drive, I think Georgia Southern might call that a little bit of a win, being able to at least slow Coastal down and not give up that second straight touchdown drive. Yeah, you're right. They used about four and a half minutes on that drive and netted three points. The first drive of the day, if you remember, Went for seven and a half minutes, and they got a touchdown out of it. Georgia Southern's got to find a way to get in the end zone and then find a way to stop Coastal from going down the field. A good mix of plays again. They converted on third down, key third down. They were able to convert on. They're three of five on third down conversion so far. Like we talked about earlier, Coastal is not the most efficient team in the world. It takes them a lot to do what they do. 34 minutes of game time of possession. They're scoring right around 27 points per contest. They are totally predicated on just not giving you the football and how good they've been on third down keeps them in games. But a week ago, Arkansas State punched them in the first quarter. Got up 14-0, and the shots folded up like an accordion. Right now they're averaging five and a half yards per play, so we got to find a way to stop that. Here's the kickoff. Kennedy waving for the fair catch and pulls that in right at the goal line. So the Eagles get it at the 25. Let's go down to Russ Brown real quickly. Russ, it was Coastal moving the ball down the field with run and pass, but what did you see on the third down stop? Uh, just good penetration from the defensive line. Those guys are really starting to come on strong and make some plays. You saw Josh get in there on that second down play too, so the safety's coming up to help in the run game on the sideline there. Coach Lowen was really talking to Lane Ecton in particular, but the linebacking core, and, and just trying to help diagnose what's going on with those short passes. So look for some adjustments in that second level for the Eagles defense. Chris Harris already has seven tackles for Georgia Southern. That's high as a career high. Logan Wright and Wesley Fields in that gun with shy words. This is first and 10 at the 25. Handoff Fields juking back to the right, allowed the hole to make itself. And he's up to the 29-yard line for four. Linebacker Silas Kelly wrapped him a pie and brought him to the surf turf. Kept moving his legs and able to get the initial yards there. Wesley Fields, 12th in school history with just shy of 2,700 yards rushing. A high likelihood that he would pass former quarterback Chaz Williams for 11th at some point the next couple of games. Drake Grawl in its center, left hash, actually called that a gain of three. So second down and seven at the 28. Dye Fields running right past, half past the 35, and a first down, a Franklin first down for Wesley Fields before the knees touch the turf at his own 37. Visit Franklin Toyota on the bypass, or you can check them out online at franklintoyota.com. That's a little counter coming back for Fields. We had success with that on the initial drive, if you remember. I like that play. Nice little wrinkle. Fields had just 10 carries, 17 yards all of last week already. Six for 38 this evening at Coastal. Down 10-3, five minutes into the second quarter. Two backs, two wides, tight end Cam Brown left. Eagles at their 37, first and 10. There's the pitch play to Monteo Garrett. Squares his shoulders and sprints upfield after going left. That's a solid gain up to the 42-yard line for a quick five. Fitz Wadley out of McEachern High makes the tackle. Cam Brown goes out to throw the block. He did his job. Garrett cuts up in front of him. The linebackers in good pursuit. We're in lane to make the tackle, but not before we were able to pick up five, as you mentioned. That was true option for Georgia Southern, and now they're going under center with the flex bone for just the 11th time all year. Second and five at the 42. Rocket toss out to the left, Wesley Kennedy, and the Chanticleers have that well defended. Clayton, the defensive lineman, ran him out of bounds despite some help from Drake Rawl blocking. He did get back to the line of scrimmage, did Kennedy. Third down and five for the Eagles at their 42. Down 10-3 with 9-17 remaining first half. It's hard to show that speed getting to the edge when you run that play to the short side of the field, though. They were able to close quickly. Linebackers do have a lot of speed for Coastal Carolina. Very impressed. The Eagles one of three on third down today. 
Georgia Southern spreading the formation with four wides, only a five-man box for Coastal. This would seem like running central for the Eagles. At their 42, third and five, low snap. Wirtz picks it up, throws right for Kennedy, out to the numbers, 45. Have to see where he goes out of bounds. Oh, come on. Wow. Okay, good. Woo. I was like, look, it looked like he ran right over it. And they spotted at the line to gain, which My was goodness. the 47. They have not moved the change yet. Oh, gosh. I that's a tough spot there. It looked like Kennedy certainly got past the line, but the spot is at the 47. The cornerback, Mallory Claiborne, moved him out of bounds. They still have not moved the change, but it does say first down. Now they're moving the change. Boy, that took an awful long time to do. Kennedy makes his second catch of the first half to go along with two carries. Now the whistle blows and... The clock is still running down to 8-12. They stop it there. The play clock had never reset. Shauna clears were walking towards the far sideline like a timeout had been called. There's definitely some confusion on that field. It took forever for the chains to move. They did. Coastal set up. Eagles break the huddle, and we're all hunky-dory. At their 47, Georgia Southern right to left with three wides. H-back Ellis Richardson on the left. Dive Wesley Fields, that pops. 50, 45, Coastal 40, left hash 30. Needs a block down to the 22-yard line. Fields got spilled over. It's a run of 31 for Wesley Fields. And for the second time, the cornerback, Derek Bush, had to save the touchdown. If he got one more block, he's still running. But man, did that open up after Richardson cleared that left edge. That was a great tackle by Bush as well because he actually lost his footing it was able to come back and wrap his legs up, which brought him down. Great run. Fields up to 69 yards rushing on seven carries. From the Coastal 22, first and 10 left hash. Snap works. Here's Monteo Garrett. That's a big hole up the middle inside the 20-yard line, but he only reaches the 18. That hole was a lot bigger than the game ended up being, but still four yards on first down as Kelly and Wadley team up for the stop. He did something we haven't seen him do a whole lot of because usually he just sticks his head down and runs hard through it. He danced a little bit there. When you dance a little bit trying to juke a guy, enabled them to make the tackle on him versus just sticking his head down with a... Oh, speed. Eagles break that huddle quickly from behind the line of scrimmage. Only two yards back, they were assembled. Second and six at the Shauna Clear 18, right between the hash marks. Two backs, two wides, one H back. Wartz hands off for Garrett, opens up again right side. Down to the 15 and tumble salts ahead to the 12. Teron Jackson, the defensive end, brought him down. The chains move once more. It's first down and 10 from the 12 as an individual is still down for the shots. That is their mammoth defensive lineman, Teron Jackson, that made the tackle. And he tripped him up again. Yeah, he's a big one, too. He is a big one. He looks bigger because he's a D lineman that wears a single digit. I don't know why it looks that way. Timeout on the field. We'll check on Jackson when we return. 6.48 remaining in the second quarter. Eagles on the move, trailing 10-3 here at Coastal. This is Georgia Southern Football, powered by Learfield. You're listening to the Georgia Southern Sports Network, powered by Learfield. Carolina defensive end Teron Jackson has been helped off the field, but the Eagles are seriously threatening at the shot 12. They've got first and 10, down 10 to 3 with 6.48 remaining in the second quarter. Terry, we talked earlier in this game that the dive is there for the Eagles. They're averaging six yards per carry. They're defending the dive is coastal, very similar to what Arkansas State did earlier this year, where the holes are massive off tackle so the track is getting adjusted a little bit it's not necessarily a true dive but the holes are there the holes are there especially on that counter we can't get to the edge though and turn it up so maybe that dive will open the edge up for us later marcus rogers and malik murray split left ransom wide right first and 10 from the 12 quarterback lead play works breaks left works to the 10 to the 5 jumps out of the end zone he hurdled a shot of clear wings up eagle nation touchdown georgia southern back wow. in his home state shy works with his 12th rushing touchdown of the year and the eagles have cut it to 10 to 9 with 635 left in the second wow he that was beautiful yeah he jumped right over Derek bush like he was a park bench on Georgia Southern's campus. Oh, my goodness. Let's see if Bass can square the affair. Langan hunched over the football. Bowerly to hold it. They've done this forever. And Bass bangs it off the scoreboard. That's how you answer. 
Nine plays and 75 yards to tie the game at 10 with 6.35 left in the half. As we pause all across the Georgia Southern Sports Network, powered by Learfield. You're listening to the Georgia Southern Sports Network, powered by Learfield. Now for the fourth scoring drive here at Georgia Southern, we go all out, not just on game day, but every day. And the same is true with the Ford F-150. It works hard and never backs down, going all out and never giving in. That's the F-150, the official truck of the Georgia Southern Eagles. Ten plays. Check that. Nine plays. 75 yards. I had to correct myself. That last one was so good it counted for two. It it should have counted for two. Nine plays, 75 yards. Four and a half minutes on the clock to match our last drive of four and a half minutes. This time we got seven points versus three. Great runs off tackle. Great counter by Fields. Wirtz follows uh, uh, off to the left side and then hurdles over the corner into the end zone and it was just a beautiful you know you see these guys try to hurdle the tacklers and they end up getting blocked he hurdled him and kept running that was like back in track days there so tie it up here with 635 to go in the second quarter it's 10 to 10 and now georgia southern getting ready to kick off and maybe this defense will find a way to stop coastal carolina's offense your track days are track days in general not mine. Okay, just, okay. I've been to a track. I've seen it, but most of them were dog tracks. <laughs> Coach Russell loved the dog tracks, by the way. Did he really? Oh, my Lord. He loved them. He loved the one in St. Augustine at Orange Park. We used to talk about that every time we crossed the Florida line on the bus. we go to play FAMU or Bethune Cookman. He was always yells back about <laughs> going to the dog tracks. Jay Williams, Kion Tyler to return for Coastal Bass, the approach and the kickoff. Carries Tyler one yard deep into the end zone, brings it up up the right side. Numbers want a stick by Richardson at the 17. Ooh. Ellis doesn't get a chance to make too many tackles, but he just lit up Tyler. At 6'3, 240 pounds, maybe we need to try him on defense. Got down the field quickly and just lowered the boom. Thought that Tyler was going to call for the fair catch, but he brought it out from a yard deep, and Richardson just leveled him. Stations, we owe you an ID. We will get that to you momentarily. Tied at 10, 631 left second quarter. Three wides, Peyton in the gun with two backs, joined by both Marable and James. Option left, Johnson forces the string out. Big hit on Peyton and a tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Marable had the pitch, a loss of two. Raymond Johnson, the third, and Lane Acton both coming in to make the play. Rashad Bird involved as well. Yes, he did. Bird came up quickly, took the quarterback, and popped him right as he was releasing. He had nowhere to go. Great stepping up for the defense there. You just wonder if a hit like that from Richardson is going to swing the momentum to Georgia Southern for the first time in the game. And that's the first tackle for a loss so far tonight. Eagles put three down linemen. Second down and 12 for Coastal with its 15 ball now in the left hash with three wides. Peyton the gun snap. Huge rush from Griffin. Peyton dropped the football. It is still free down around the 12. The whistle blows as Josh Moon dove in late. We need a signal. Lane Acton hopping up thinking the Eagles have the football. No signal has been given yet. Juan Griffin says it's Georgia Southern football. It is Eagle football. It's Raymond Johnson the third at the bottom of the pile after Peyton just lost his grip on the pigskin. You talk about letting them play. I don't understand that for a bit. The ball was still bouncing around, and they were blowing the whistle and then kept going at it. Then at the very end, you had a Coastal Carolina player right in front of the official slap Reese in the face mask there. Still bouncing around. Great job. He was able to knock it out of his hands as he was getting ready to pass. It looked like Quan Griffin. Is that right? I think Quan Griffin's going to get credit for another sack fumble. And for the Eagles, that is now their 14th consecutive game with a turnover forced. First time they've done that in a decade. This is good real estate. First and 10 at the Coastal 12. Wirtz scored from here the last time they had the football. Wesley Fields on the dive, juking back right inside the 10, churning those legs as much as the senior can. Americus' pride won't go down easy. He trudges to the six-yard line for a gain of six. Before the next play, let's pause 10 seconds for a station ID. This is Eagle football powered by Learfield. Alongside Terry Harvin and Colin Lacey on Danny Reed, Russ Brown, Frank Solkowski down on the sidelines. Tied at 10, 5.07 left in the second quarter, but the Eagles at the Coastal 6, second down and four. 
Gun for Wirtz, two backs. Dive fake right, QB lead again. Wirtz scored on this last time. Ends up just kind of falling to the ground at the three. Very close to a first and goal. They have halted the clock with 4.50 left. They, actually, they have wound it again. The far side official had his arms waving to say stop the clock, but they've confirmed that this is short by about a foot. Third down upcoming for the Eagles. Looks like when he went to cut right, he just lost his foot and fell down. I was worried. I thought his knee gave out on him. I'm glad it didn't. The Eagles 2 of 4 on third down. See if Georgia Southern could get in the end zone after listening to the Undertaker's music. Play clock down to seven, third and less than a yard from the coastal three between the hashes. Wirtz bringing Murray in motion. Dive Wesley Fields. Gallagher hit him, and I think he lost a little bit. He got pushed backwards a half yard. Jeffrey Gunter, the defensive end, waving his arms back and forth. And the Eagles not wasting any time. They've already sent Bass on to try to give Georgia Southern the first lead of the game. Got to take some points away from this. You'd much rather have a touchdown, granted. But you got to at least get three, take the lead. Defensive tackle Jonathan Clayton out of Sandalwood, where he was teammates with Logan Wright, was the first man to contact Fields. That is a loss of a yard back to the four. And Tyler Bass pretty much kicking a PAT from the right hash. Slices that through the thin atmosphere, and the Eagles have the lead. 13-10, they're on top. With 3.39 left in the first half, Georgia Southern converts the fumble by Payton that was recovered by Raymond Johnson III into three points. They've scored the last 10 unanswered, but Coastal does have a chance with potentially the final drive of this second quarter. But you love the Eagles' continued ability to force turnovers. They are now plus 22 turnover margin this season. And the key thing that you're talking about is we able to get points on the board. Granted, we would have loved to have had a touchdown there. The Coastal did a good job of stepping up there and closing the gap that's been there for us with that dive play. So at least we got three. And it all started right here on the kickoff. Richardson goes down there and pops the man. And they stop the, They start on their own 17-yard line. And then Quan Griffin comes in with the sack fumble. Good pressure on him right away. Got to get inside their heads, figure out a way to get the ball back once again. We need some more separation. Coastal Carolina, since beating UAB at home for UAB's only loss of the season, they have lost their last three home games by a combined 70 points. They trail by three here as Bass's kickoff this time is much better over everyone's head and out of the end zone for the touchback. Let's go down real quickly to Russ Brown. Russ, that, that simple dive play is turning into more of an off-tackle, but those holes are unmistakable. Yeah, it's really starting to open up. And as we know with this offense, everything kind of flows through that. So, and, and, and then you follow that up with the dive starting to open up. The combination of that, the Eagles starting to move the football. The defense starting to key in a little bit better on what Coastal is trying to get accomplished. The big hit by Richardson on the uh, kick return. And, I mean, this sideline is fired up right now. It's going to be up to Coastal to match the intensity of Georgia Southern. That's certainly a key on the road and in any place Georgia Southern plays. Twins right from the 25, first and 10. Peyton play fake right down the seam, almost picked off. Too high intended for Malcolm Williams, who incidentally does not have a catch so far. Josh Boone made the Superman dive, but just couldn't pull in the football near the 40. Keep in mind, right up the seam, it looks like he gave up on the route. Communication issue between the quarterback and the receiver. This is a very good quarterback in Fred Payton, and I hate to see him as it continues to grow. We have to play against him. He's very talented. But keep in mind that he is a true freshman, so we can try to get in his head. He's hit his first four passes, but he's just three of his last seven. Hasn't been very good on first down either. Two backs, two wides from the 25. Second down and 10. Counter play for James. Started left, juke back to the right through the center. Reese comes in along with Griffin as there's some pushing and shoving downfield with Badowski and Moon. No flags, no harm, no foul, literally. But after a gain of four, it's third and six from Coastal's 29 with 317 left in the half. And the Eagles now leading 13-10. Well, you got about 600 pounds of blockers coming at you right there. So <laughs> he did a good job of staying in there. Bless his heart. <laughs> Took me a while to figure out what that actually meant, too. <laughs> Coastal 3 of 5 on third downs tonight. Stacked bunch out to the left, and now it's three men as James motions left. 
Third and six of the 29. Payton looking short. Middle, that's incomplete. Boy, that would have been a first down to Marable, who broke back across the middle on the angle route, but the ball was behind him. Payton looks like he's thinking after that fumble, and for the first time tonight, Coastal's got a punt with 2.51 left in the half. Oh, almost an INT. I saw that ball come up just out of his tips. Coastal's got a very good punter, though. He's 6'2", 185, just a sophomore, but he's averaging about 43 yards a punt. Charles Overson out of Merle's Inlet, South Carolina, beautiful part of the Palmetto State. Since you heard his last name, you understand why I didn't pronounce it. Overson pulls it down. Eagles bring four. High, wobbling kick near side. Kennedy tells his mates to get away from it. Skips inside the Georgia Southern 40, inside the 30. Is that a live ball? No, advantageous hop for Coastal. Shot of clears think that's a live football, but you can't advance a muff anyway as Josh Johnson had to catch up to the shots at the goal line, but that ball has been whistled dead at the Eagle 21. 50-yard punt. Well, smart move by Coastal Carolina coming up there because it was close to our players. Just talking about how good he was. He kicked it up high. Our guy's got to do a better job of communicating getting it out of the way because that could have easily hit one of our players. Great job by the defense to get that three and out, just what you wanted. Coastal still under the impression that this might be their football, but the Eagle offense is already huddled near side. We're going to get a look at this. And I can understand why they would. That was close to hitting an Eagle. Close to hitting two. It hit a Coastal player on the right foot. Well, as soon as it's the Coastal player, it doesn't matter if it hits an well, Eagle. The from, ball was considered that angle, dead. Correct. From that angle, it did. But I understand why they would go after the ball. Certainly should have been reviewed. Georgia Southern ball with their 21. Trips right. First down and 10 up 13-10. 237 left first half. Option left pitch. Wesley Kennedy. Nice block in the quarter. Kennedy upfield 25. Lunges towards the 29-yard line. But the clock continues to run after a gain of eight. What a cut block by Logan Wright. He did a very good job of getting out there. You're talking about running an option against a fellow option team. So you'd like to think they can defend it. We are able to pick up eight, nine yards on that. Got able to get to the edge, which we haven't been able to do today. But Logan Wright, the kid out of Jacksonville, threw a great block. Eagles can get points here and get the opening drive of the second half, but they only have 2.07 to go quite a ways. That was a gain of eight, second down and two at their 29. Twins out to the right, H-back Ellis Richardson, the wrecking crew is in. Wurtz waving Kennedy in motion left. Die fake to Logan Wright. He wants the deep ball. Wurtz just throws it near sideline and out of bounds. And Eagle went out of bounds. That was Kennedy. So that's why the official threw his hat. But fortunately, Kennedy was enough in the area that that's not intentional grounding. Third down and two. Tried the deep shot to set up this third down play. It was. They were looking also for that wheel route to Kennedy down the sideline. But you got to give credit where credit's due. Silas Kelly, the outside linebacker, was step for step with Kennedy down the sideline. And that says a lot for a linebacker that's 6'4", 230 on Speedster Kennedy. Can the Eagles pick up two? They're just two of five on third down. Out of the gun from their 29. Left hash. Coastal with eight in the box. Dive Wesley Fields. Gonna be short. He's past the 30, but barely. I don't think he got what he needed. He's gonna be a yard short, our football short. It's just beyond the 30. Got hit and taken down hard. I mean, with a buck 36 to go to halftime, you're on our side of it, fourth and one. Of course, our players are saying, let's go for it, but. The clock has been stopped with 136 to check the official spot. Now it's going to wind. Chad Lunsford is going to let this run and then call a timeout. There's no need to rush the punt team onto the field. The Eagle offense is still out there because, again, there's no need to rush. Both teams do have three timeouts. What happened to the old days of lining up and trying to draw the other team off? They may try that. I'm not exactly sure what's doing in Chad Lunsford's mind. There's the timeout at 112. It is fourth down and less than a yard for the Eagles at their 30. I think the odds are that Georgia Southern punts this football, but... They do have momentum, and you never really know with a team that's predicated on converting third and fourth and short, do you take a chance? Keep in mind, you do get the ball first in the start of the third quarter if you're Georgia Southern. Correct. So punting the ball away, hoping to get a stop, and going to the locker room up by three, 13 to 10. Might be better than having an unfortunate mistake right here, and you give the ball back. We're going to punt the ball. Yeah, Bowerly's heading onto the field. He hasn't punted all night. But again, with the timeouts that we have available to us, we still have two more timeouts. I do love lining up and trying to draw somebody off. Kion Tyler back to return for Coastal inside his own 30. 
So the Eagles unable to move the football after Overson's punt. Snap to Bowerly. Coastal only brings one. Bowerly gets a low kick, not a great one, but not returnable. Hops at the 36, and Randy Waits sprinting upfield, snatches that with both hands. And the official spot is the Coastal Carolina 36. Oh, that's rough because they Coastal has all three of their timeouts remaining. Pretty good field position for them here at the 36-yard line. Just a 34-yard punt for Bowerly. Biscardi already has one made field goal this evening. That was from 35, and it was earlier in this quarter. Coastal had led 10-3. Eagles tied it at 10 on Shy Wirtz's touchdown run. Coastal then fumbled on the next drive. That was Peyton putting it on the turf. Bass converted his second field goal from 20 for the 13-10 lead. Trips out to the left. Fred Payton still the quarterback. They have three on the roster that all play, but it's been all Payton tonight. Draw play. Payton up the middle. Breaking out to the left up to the 40-yard line. Hit hard and dropped to the ground at the 43. Josh Moon thinking there may have been a late block on the center, Trey Carter, but no flag comes out. That's a seven-yard run for Payton. Coastal with just 45 seconds and ticking. They do have all three of their timeouts. Twins right, 38, now 37. Second down and three at the 43. Coastal wants the screen. Payton jukes away from Johnson, racing far side. Throws towards the sideline. Marable twisting in front of Phillips, and he makes the catch somehow with his feet in bounds at his own 49. We're saying some of our guys thinking they did not make the catch. But uh, incomplete passes oh, okay. the ruling. Yeah, he was out of bounds. Yeah. He made the catch, granted, but he was out of bounds making it. Got to wrap that quarterback up there. Credit Payton for pretty much juking out three oncoming rushers for the Eagles. They don't have a sack in the last three weeks. Well, correction, they do have a sack on the forced fumble by Quan Griffin earlier, yeah. but not the traditional sack. Because it's incomplete, it's third and three for Coastal, and it's 43. Just 28 seconds left in the half. Georgia Southern on top, 13-10. At the left hash, the center judge leaves the football. Shotgun. Payton, hands to Marable, hit behind the line of scrimmage, Ty Phillips. And Georgia Southern has called a timeout with 24 seconds left. Chad Lunsford had it signaled as soon as Phillips brought the pain on C.J. Marable. Coastal's going to have to punt for the second straight possession. That'll leave us with one timeout to half, but again, good things can happen for you. We've already blocked one this year. And you've got Bass, who's made two field goals. And you know if there's a chance at the end of the half where you can kick one from any distance, Coach Lunsford's going to give him the chance to do that. Coming up in 24 seconds, roughly, we've got the Southern Halftime Report. Russ Brown will catch up with Chad Lunsford. We'll take a look around the rest of the conference, including Georgia State getting absolutely spanked by Appalachian State. Take a look around the country and maybe even prep you for some Georgia Southern men's basketball. 8 o'clock tonight, semifinals of the Islands of the Bahamas Showcase down in Nassau. They take on Pepperdine with a chance to play for the title on Sunday. Well, we're in coastal Carolina and Conway where it's, uh, what's the temperature here? 40-something, 50? What is it in the Bahamas right now? Warm. <laughs> Over sent to punt. He is at his own 28. Eagles don't look like they're coming after this, though they do bring four. Pretty good kick. Kennedy has already called for the fair catch and makes that at the 12. Ooh, scary. 45-yard punt for Overson, no return. Eagles only have 18 seconds and one timeout. This isn't exactly a spot where you would get cute. I can picture Georgia Southern taking an E and just being happy up 13-10 at the break. Yeah, you don't go after the punter there trying to get a block. You can't get a return. I certainly would just run it right up the gut and eat the clock and go into the locker room with a three-point lead especially since you get that ball to start the third quarter. In fact, the Eagles have already aligned in the tight formation. Wirtz is possibly going to set up with the knee, though. Arkansas State had a formation like this in the second quarter last week. They faked it on him and actually ended up having a field goal try. Wirtz does take the knee, and that ends the first half. Now, Georgia Southern was down for much of the first quarter, but they score the final 10 points of the half. And here in Conway, it's the Eagles 13. Coastal Carolina 10 as Russ Brown has caught up with Chad Lunsford. Here with head coach Chad Lunsford. Coach, a big momentum swing there with the touchdown, the big hit on the kick return, and then a field goal off the turnover. Yeah, no uh, no question. I'd like to see us get seven points off that turnover. Uh, but really good job, our guys staying in it, making sure that we come back and got the lead. Good luck in the second half, coach. Thank you. Danny? 
I think that Ellis Richardson's hit on the kickoff return may have been where this game swung a little bit. I know Shy Ward scored the touchdown to tie it, but you felt the the pulse of the game swing to Georgia Southern as soon as Richardson decked Tyler on that kickoff. Return. And then we came in with a defense and dialed up a different look for them. We were able to get pressure on the freshman Peyton quarterback, and that's where your sack fumble occurred. Like Coach Lunsford mentioned, like to get seven instead of three, but at the end of the day, we have a three-point lead, and we get the ball coming out of half. Georgia Southern leads Coastal Carolina 13-10 after 30. Colin Lacey and Terry Harvin have more after this. With the Southern Halftime Report on the Georgia Southern Sports Network, powered by Learfield. This has been the Southern Halftime Report, brought to you by BB&T, sharing knowledge for a brighter direction. And by Savannah Hilton Head International Airport, along with the Savannah Airport Commission. Now, with the call of the second half, once again, Terry Harvin and the voice of the Eagles, Danny Reed. Georgia Southern to receive the second half kickoff on senior night here in Conway, South Carolina at Brooks Stadium. Also, Military Appreciation Night. A beautiful display out front, remembering our fallen, commemorating the Men and women that have lost their lives in service to this country ever since 9-11. Georgia Southern on the field, taking a 13-10 advantage over Coastal. We're trailing 10-3 into the second quarter. But Shywurst capping off a 75-yard drive with a 12-yard touchdown run in which he completely hurdled an oncoming defender at the goal line. The very next kickoff return, Ellis Richardson lit up Kion Tyler. Quarterback Fred Payton, three pay plays later, fumbled the football. Quan Griffin, the sack fumble, recovered by Raymond Johnson, the third. Tyler Bass, the second field goal of the half, gives us the score of 13-10. to 10. Eagles ran the football well. 23 total carries for 125 yards. That's a 5.4 average. Wesley Fields looked great in that half. He had a 31-yard run overall, 10 carries, 75 yards. Yeah, he's averaging 7.5 yards per carry, as you mentioned, off tackle and also the counter. Seems to be working as well. Uh, anything to try to pick apart. They, they are putting a good bit in the box. But uh, got to find a way to here put a touchdown on the board here in this opening drive. Again, put 10 points separation between us and let it keep growing as we get ready. Well, if we can pull off this victory and then next week in Atlanta. So but today is what all that matters. You ever seen a game at Turner Field? No, a baseball. Okay. <laughs> Never a high school. Well, it's. Actually, I've been to more high school. I mean, high school games with bigger crowds, but I imagine we'll bring a good crowd to that ball game. I know the EFA is going to have a huge tailgate there. Biscardi, the kickoff to begin the third quarter. A little bit high, a little bit short. Kennedy approaches, pulls it in. Near side numbers at the nine. Race upfield 25, and he's up to the 29-yard line. The canal that was open closed quickly as Paul Smith made the stop for Coastal Carolina. This could be... A very important drive. When the Eagles have done well the first drive of the third quarter, they have set the tone. When they've had to punt or done something else, it has turned into, in some ways, an unnecessarily close game. But a dominant drive to start the third quarter against South Alabama comes to mind. I'd love to see something like that to seize this game. Up 13-10 to the Eagles. They go left to right from their own 29 following Kennedy's 20-yard run back. He's the running back in there with Shy Works busting that off left tackle. And Brewer pulled him down, as did Gunter, after just a... Now they're going to call that a three-yard gain up to the 32. Gosh. A rare time where Kennedy lined up in the backfield, had an opening, but just tripped up. And it looked like he had a huge opening to go. you got to give Jeffrey Gunter a lot of credit. 6'4 defensive end there, came off his block and able to fold down and make the tackle. Had he not, that would have been an easy first down. Gunter just three tackles this evening, came into this contest second in the league in tackles for loss. Bunch trips out to the left. That was a gain of three. Second down and seven. Eagles at their 32. Kennedy motions around the shotgun. Here comes Wesley Fields. Dragged down by one hand, though he more stumbled anything else. He gains three up to the 35, which arranges third down and four. Wallace Cowens, reserve defensive end out of Conyers and Heritage High, made the tackle. Just can't get through that last trip there. I mean, we've fallen over our own feet a few times and then uh, catch that foot and just trip you up. Huge third down for the Eagles. Two of six tonight so far as Georgia Southern. You don't want to go three and out here to start the third quarter. Up 13-10 at Coastal. Left hash, three wides, two backs in the gun. 
Third and fourth, the 35. Kennedy motions left. Now back around the shotgun. Here's Wesley Field. Still driving, still fighting past Javay Brown. He's got a first down. He needed four yards, and he picked up five as the senior is nearing his fifth career 100-yard game. That little little tug at the very end to get past Javay Brown earned the first. He had Kennedy go in motion, then come back like it's going to be an option. He runs right behind the center, almost loses the ball. Did a good job of driving his feet to get to the 40. That was a huge third down pickup for Georgia Southern. Fields gets a breather as Garrett and Logan Wright are split behind the shotgunning works. Play clock shows 12. First and 10 for the Eagles at their 40. All in white and blue. Coastal in black and teal. Dive to Monteo Garrett. He bounces right. Has a shot. Near side numbers to the 50. 45 cuts up field. 40 to the 30. Monteo up to the 20. Speed of the 10. Tripped up and dragged down at the 6-yard line. 54-yard gain for Monteo Garrett. It's his longest of the season. First and goal for the blue and white. What a job to bounce that after the middle had just been smushed together. I can't see the numbers very well on Coastal Carolina's jersey, but it looked like he was either Brown or Claiborne that was able to trip him up there at the end. What a great, I mean, we talk about getting the edge and then closing quickly. That time there was no closing on Garrett. Montel was steering that car every which direction. He was juking as he was speeding forward and just got shoestring tackled down at the six for a 54-yard carry. First and goal for the Eagles at the six right hash. Double tight end set. Richardson quick motion. Handoff fields back in. Wide open up the gut. Wings up, Eagle Nation. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. A dominant drive to start the third quarter. Fields was untouched into pay dirt. It's 19-10 Eagles. 12-22 to play in the third. Got so excited, I almost knocked the flat screen TV down on my head there when I signaled touchdown. Great run, great blocking up the gut. And we did exactly what we needed to do. We talked about it coming into the third quarter. Get that touchdown for a two-score separation. Seventh rushing touchdown of the year for Wesley Fields. That ties a career high. Extra point try from Bass after the low snap, but he booms it through. 71-yard drive for the Eagles, 54 of that coming from Monteo Garrett. And with 12.22 left in the third quarter, the Eagles extend the lead to Coastal. Up now 20-10. to 10. From Conway, South Carolina, this is Eagle football powered by Learfield. You're listening to the Georgia Southern Sports Network, powered by Learfield. Southern has scored the game's last 17 points. The opening drive of the third quarter, all blue and white. After Monteo Garrett's 54-yard run set... Goes six yards on first and goal to make the lead. Georgia Southern 20, Coastal Carolina 10. And Terry Harvin, why don't you tell us more about that scoring drive? As I choke on a frowny there and then hit the wrong cough button. That was That's okay. They didn't want to hear me anyway. You're <laughs> I was wondering, why are you grabbing my hand? I, now I understand that. I that want to hold right. your hand. I, Go I ahead. appreciate that. I hope you continue <laughs> to sing at the end of this game and say it as well with my soul because that means Georgia Southern. Just got another victory on their belts. Five plays, 71 yards, two minutes and 34 seconds, 54-yard run by Garrett. And also a hard, hard third down conversion by Wesley Fields. Fields now at 89 yards on the day, averaging 6.8 yards per play. Puts the Eagles up 20 to 10. And Ford scoring drive, that was it because Ford F-150 works hard and never backs down. Because when you're built Ford tough, that's what you do. The drive to win is everything. The F-150, the official truck of the Georgia Southern Eagles. As Mr. Bass tees it up, gets ready to kick it off with 12-22 here in the third quarter. Hope that's a sign of things to come for the Eagles. Wesley Fields gaining that third down. On third and four, he picked up five. The next play, Garrett went 54. The next play after that was the touchdown. As the towels wave on the near side, Tyler Bass's kickoff goes out of the end zone over Kion Tyler's head. Terry, those towels that you handed out last week at Paulson Stadium look mighty good here in Conway this evening. They do. They brought them with them, and we appreciate the Cotton Commission for providing those towels through the EFAA. Handed them out during pregame. Saw a lot of them. Ag Day was last week. Didn't get the victory, but uh, certainly had a, a lot of fans in attendance who got there. In fact, Colin has his with him today. Coastal's last three drives have netted only six total yards. They actually have consecutive three and outs. Out of the shotgun, Peyton on the dive to Alex James from the 25, first and 10. Tunnels through the center. Did pick up, we're going to call that three yards to the 28. 
Lots of bodies being unpiled. Brinson was in there along with Hunt and Ty Phillips. Up the gut hasn't really worked for Coastal Carolina today. They do have 82 in the air, 56 on the ground. Their first two drives were both very impressive, netting the 10 points, but the last three drives, the Eagles have put the hammer on them. Four wides, two each way. Out of the gun, Payton. Second down and eight at the 27. Payton, shot puts this left. Nice catch on the leap. Randy Wade, though, wrapped up likely right away and throws him into the near side bench where Georgia Southern is situated at the 33. It's going to be short by about a football. Yeah. Thought we could undercut that round and get a pick six out of it. Wade did a good job of staying with him. I was watching Moon coming from the safety position. When you got a linebacker and you got the coverage, maybe sometimes you can risk it and jump the route. The spot is just past the 34. This is third down and less than a yard as the Eagles pack it in tight in the center. Up 20 to 10 with 11-20 left. And the third snap goes over Peyton's head. Back inside the 20. Marable just falls on it at the 15. That's the second time that a third down snap has been mishandled. That one, though, could have been caught by Yao Ming as the Shana Clears have to punt on a three and out for the third straight time. You remember Yao Ming, you're a basketball fan. I, I you caught me on that one. I had nothing to say back. Carter's the center. He's 305 pounds, six foot one sophomore. Again, they got four sophomores across the front, one junior. Done a very solid job. They're going to continue to grow and be a very, very good offensive line. Those errant snaps will not help you there. That was third down and less than a yard, and the loss went all the way back to the 15. Overson punting from there. Kennedy goes backwards, makes the fair catch at his own 45. The punt goes for 40, no return. That was a 19-yard loss on yep. the snap that went over Peyton's head, and Marable just plopped onto it so the Eagles didn't get a scoop and score. But now, Georgia Southern, after that 71-yard touchdown drive, begins its second drive of the third quarter from the 45 going left to right from that right hash. Keep in mind, their first two drives ended up in scores. The last three have been three and out punts. Starting offensive line in for Georgia Southern as Wirtz running the lead option. Left pitch, Wesley Kennedy around Gunter. Nice block from Richardson in the shot of clear territory at the 45. Heft ran him into the shot of clear bench. A Franklin first down to the shot 41. That's a gain of 14 for Wesley Kennedy on the lead option to the wide side of the field. Great block. You mentioned Richardson. I was hoping to see it up here. Not only did he get a good block, he kept driving the block, put him in the sideline that really opened up that lane. Kennedy, five carries, 22 yards this game. He has been much more involved in the offense after only two touches all of last week against Troy. Richardson motioning out to the left on first and 10 at the Coastal 41. There's the gun snap handoff. Fields, the hole was open, but Fields unable to drive past Silas Kelly. He makes his way to the Shauna Clear 40, just a gain of a yard, second down and nine. With under 10 minutes to play in the third quarter, Georgia Southern leads by two scores, 20 to 10, here at Brooks Stadium. Kennedy, I mean, Fields somehow got a yard off the field a little bit beat up. Those linebackers for Coastal, like we talked about, doing a very, very good job. Wesley Fields 35 yards away from moving past Chaz Williams for 11th in rushing in Georgia Southern history. That was Chaz Williams a good one. Najee Thompson in slot right. Garrett in the backfield with Wirtz on second and nine at the 40. Wirtz pulled that away from Garrett, throwing the stiff arm. And the tackle was made by that very stiff arm. Chandler Christ pretty much just put him in a Venus flytrap with that stiff arming arm. And Wirtz is dropped back to the 42 for a minus two. From the corner position, walked up on a corner blitz, came in hard, was all over him. He didn't have a chance. That's just their third tackle for a loss on the day. It's going to give them about six yards and maybe seven in tackles for loss. Eagles speed out of the huddle from the right hash, moving towards the field house. Third down and 11th at shot, 43. With 8.40 left in the third, up 20 to 10. Works to throw, four-man rush. Shy, rolling right, back near the 50. Throws, and it should have been picked, but it was dropped. Oh, that should have been picked by Silas Kelly. More important because the Eagles haven't thrown a pick all season long. Gallagher brought the pressure. That hit Kelly right in the midst, but he just couldn't pick up the pick. Works threw that ball right to him. And he took a shot at the end as well. He's taking some hits. Linebacker was chasing Gallagher. Had shy back there. We already talked about how fast Gallagher is. Showed it once again. 
Bowerly's second punt of the night. Coastal brings pressure, unable to get to it as Bowerly with a really good kick. Back to the 11-yard line, Kion Tyler calls for and makes the fair catch at the 12. Timeout on the field after Bowerly's 31-yard punt, but well-placed with good height, not allowing for a return. With 8.29 left in the third quarter, Coastal Carolina trails Georgia Southern 20-10. From Conway, South Carolina, this is Eagle Football, powered by Learfield. You're listening to the Georgia Southern Sports Network, powered by Learfield. 29 to play third quarter from Brooks Stadium in Conway, South Carolina. Georgia Southern on top of Coastal Carolina, 20 to 10. Before shot a clear possession, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Eagle Football, powered by Learfield. Ethan Confred, Master Controls, back in Statesboro with Colin Lacey, Russ Brown, Frank Solkowski, and Terry Harvin. I'm Danny Reed. After Bowerly's punch, Shauna clears at their 12 first and 10. Vildor and Brinson playing press coverage. Peyton has the gun snap, handing right for Marable, looking for the corner, has to cut it up up to the 15 near the 18-19 yard line. Rashad Bird helping out Jay Bowdry with the tackle. Seven-yard run, though, for C.J. Marable. Good sign for Coastal, considering they've gone three and out their last three possessions. Yeah, great run. Took it off tackle the right side. He was able to bend it back. Going to go tempo out of the pistol on second down and three from the 19. And there's a TFL. Marable ran into a wall of white. That was Raymond Johnson the third and Ian Bush. I don't envy Marable in any way, shape, and form. They're actually going to give him a little bit. I thought he hit him right behind the line of scrimmage. Third down for him. They're three of eight on third down conversion. Started off hot, but the second quarter didn't help them. Yeah, they missed their last four, that being the three and outs. 20 to 10 Eagles lead. This is third and three from just inside the 20. Eagles have eight in the box. Quick motion far side for Miller. Option Peyton out to the right. He keeps, he's hit Deshaun Cooper. He didn't get it. Deshaun Cooper, the transfer last year out of Colin down in Mississippi. That should be Coastal's fourth consecutive three and outs as Overson has already taken the field. And we have a whistle and an individual is down for Coastal. I think it's, I think it's Peyton. He yeah, took it is. a hit at the end there. Keep in mind, he has been the only quarterback tonight. They have three guys that they rotate, but it's been all Peyton this evening. No Anderson, no Carpenter. Peyton has taken every snap, and he is flat-backed on the surf turf. He took a shot there at the end there. He's, he's an impressive quarterback. We've talked about him all night out of Parkview High School, a great program in Georgia from Swanee. 6'2", 200 pounds. As Danny mentioned, He's a freshman, wasn't supposed to really play. He's going to be redshirted because of other injuries. He got thrusted in and then never gave the starting job back up to Anderson. Anderson, you might see him now, though, the senior. Yeah, for Kilton Anderson, he has been bothered by an ankle injury for about two-thirds of the season, but we we'll don't have to worry about that until the next possession. Timeout on the field, Coastal to punt with 7.19 left in the third. Eagles by 10 on the Georgia Southern Sports Network, powered by Learfield. You're listening to the Georgia Southern Sports Network, powered by Learfield. Good news for Coastal Carolina's quarterback Fred Payton, the freshman out of Swanee and Peachtree Ridge, or rather Parkview, I'm sorry. He was just been taken to his feet, a dangerous play in which his head was pushed forward and his chin ended up on his upper chest. Ian Bush was the player that ended up hitting him from behind on that third down play. We'll check on his status as the third quarter progresses, but right now we'll see if Wesley Kennedy can do something with this Charles Overson punt. Fourth consecutive three and out for the shots as the Eagle defense has taken over the game. Overson averaging 45 yards tonight on three punts. He's had a long of 50, one inside the 20. Taking a lot of time to get this snap off. There it is, Eagles bring four. Overson's punt is spiraling but low trajectory. Kennedy lets it bounce. It goes laterally out of bounds for the Eagles at their own 33. Punt goes for 46. Let's go down to Russ Brown real quickly. Russ, any kind of good look on that play for Peyton when he got injured? Yeah, it kind of, I was standing right there, the, uh, the first down marker on the Georgia Southern side so I could try to get a good look at it. And, and he kind of, Danny, when he was, he leaned forward and kind of lowered his head to go for the first down. At the same time, he was being hit from the front and the back, and it just kind of pushed him in. Uh, they went through all the tests. He squeezed the trainer's hands. Obviously, he was able to get up and walk off under his own power, obviously, with some help and a little bit ginger. So I, I don't think we'll see him again tonight. Kilton Anderson had to take his ball cap off. He may be necessary for the rest of this one. 
Eagles run the option out of the gun with two backs. Pitch works to right side. Kennedy up the numbers. 40, 45, stays in bounds across midfield. Jukes back inside. 45, still in bounds. And finally ripped to the ground at the Coastal Carolina 42-yard line. That's 25 for Wesley Kennedy. Look at the block Cam Brown threw to open up that play. He was clearing out Silas Kelly. Great job by Kennedy also to let Brown do his job, take the defender straight up, and then tiptoe down the sidelines. Georgia Southern now up to 234 yards rushing, 7.3 yards a carry. Fields with 14 for 90 and a touch. Monteo Garrett, 5 for 70. He had a 54-yard run earlier. From the right hash at the Coastal 42, first down and 10. Die fake Logan, right pitch left. Kennedy Ellis Richardson throws the lead block. Kennedy upfield again, left side numbers to the 35-yard line. Kelly caught up to him, as did Gunter. Seven more for Kennedy. You watch the, our offensive line there. They're starting to slant to the right. We're running the play to the left. So you're taking the linebackers and the defensive tackles away from where you're running the ball, and they have to come back. So you immediately have an advantage there. And then Richardson throws a good block. Georgia Southern already with 116 yards rushing in the third quarter. Second down and three at the shot, 35. Up 20-10, to 10, 547 and ticking. Out of the gun, dive, Wesley Fields broke a tackle at the line of scrimmage, broke another far side, 25, 20, Fields up the sideline, 10, and then just steps out of bounds. C.J. Brewer escorted him into the shot at Claire Bench. Wesley Fields out of bounds at the 8-yard line. That goes for 27. Fields is over 100 yards, and the Eagles have first down and goal, breaking a couple of ankle tackles and leaving the shot of clears in the dust. Again, Edwards, Rainey, Cooper, all veering to the right on their block. Opens up a seam because you turn around and get Colbert to push the end out, and he's able to cut right on through. Fields 15 for 117, nearly eight yards a carry again. Career 100-yard game number five. He is inching up on Chaz Williams for 11th in Georgia Southern history. First and goal at the shot, eight. Give it back to Fields. Bowls over Kelly. Inside the five and extends down to the two. Six more for the fabulous senior out of America Sumter High School in southwest Georgia. The Eagles on the doorstep, possibly looking to make this a three-score lead here on the road. And when you talk about bowling over Kelly, they have him listed as 6'4", 230 as a linebacker. That's a build to play on Sundays right there. That is a compact 6'4", 230 if that actually exists. I had to look on two different charts. I still don't believe it. 440 remaining third quarter. Georgia Southern with second down and goal at the two. Split backs behind Wurtz. Logan Wright, Wesley Fields. Logan Wright throws the lead block. Wesley Fields plunges in. Wings up, Eagle Nation. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. Big runs the entire drive. Wesley Fields with his second score of the ball game. 26-10 to 10 with 432 remaining in the third. Great block up front. He was able to hurdle over. Big number 51, Dowdell. And he did a good job of getting in there. Oh, Dowdell just ate Teddy Gallagher for dinner. Oh, what a block. Dowdell, the kid out of Fairborn, Georgia. He's a transfer from Georgia Military. Redshirt sophomore, 6'4", 315. Bass for the extra point out of the hole to Bowerly. Up and through. Georgia Southern has now scored 24 consecutive points. 27 to 10 over Coastal Carolina. Terry Hartman, what do you have on those drive particulars? It's pretty easy, actually. Five plays, 67 yards, two minutes and 25 seconds. Wesley Fields, great blocking by our H backs. Richardson on another one. Cam Brown on one that got it down there. Kennedy tight walk down the sideline to pick up first downs. That's what it's supposed to be. Now we have a three score separation, which is what we needed to have. 432 to go in the third quarter. And we're starting to separate, which is exactly the position you want to be in. I tell you another position you want to be in. If you're in the market for a truck, I can't think of a better one to be than with the Ford F-150. <laughs> oh, I wish sometimes we had a camera up here. And then other times I'm thankful we don't. But I love my Ford F-150. I know Russ Brown does. He has one on the sidelines that he loves to drive. Ford F-150, official truck of the Georgia Southern Athletics. <laughs> That's a great position to be in. <laughs> Just saying. Russ, you want to comment on that at all? Uh, my truck's actually back in Macon. It's not actually on the sidelines with me, but yes, I love my white F-150. Bass's kickoff actually hits inbounds at the one, but then skids out of the end zone for another touchback and a 25-yard line start for Coastal Carolina. <laughs> you got good coffee, though. <laughs> Terry, God love you. I hope so. 
Eagle football this year proudly brought to you by Zaxby's at your neighborhood Zaxby's restaurants. Indescribably good for better than 20 years. Zaxby's State's Bros own and now found worldwide. The Georgia Southern chants sound a little bit louder when you're ahead. 27 to 10 here in the third quarter on the road. Coastal puts trips out to the right. Kilton Anderson is in at quarterback, the Fresno State transfer. Pitch play out of the gun. Far side, C.J. Marable beats Logan Hunt to the spot. Jumps over one of his own blockers up to the 35. Still churning. Wow. And he's out of bounds. Far side at the 40. 15-yard gain for Marable. We got a, a player down, took a vicious block on the sideline. That's Lane Acton, who's grabbing his face mask at the 29, way on the coastal side of the field. Great run. Great run by Marable. Turn the corner, shows his speed, and then his toughness. Jumps over to move the chains for Coastal Carolina, but Acton's down. We mentioned at the end of the last drive that Fred Payton kind of jammed his neck on a third down keeper play. He was hit by both Deshaun Cooper and Ian Bush. It took him a while to be taken back to his feet. Do not see him on the far sideline. We were pretty sure that Kilton Anderson was going to be summoned. Remember, he was the starter a year ago at the end of the season. He's made five starts this year, but he had a high ankle sprain against Louisiana Lafayette, and he has not been the same quarterback since. Last week against Arkansas State, he was only 5 out of 13 for 19 yards, and Acton is up with a little bit of a jog. He's okay coming to the near side. You mentioned Kelton Anderson, and he was the quarterback. He's a good-sized kid. He's a senior. Mature. He's played in a lot of ball games. Tight end Isaiah likely checks in on the left. Tight twins out to the right. That's the short side of the field. 423 and ticking in the third quarter. Georgia Southern leads it 27 to 10. Vildor matching a man for man on the near side with Javon Hiley, who does not have a catch tonight. Anderson looks to the far side for the play to be signaled in. A lot of time on the play clock. Anderson does a double take back behind his center, Trey Carter. Low snap, pulls it in off the knee, hands to Marable up the middle, right into Traver Vleem, and he gets pushed backwards. Gain of two up to the 42-yard line. Jay Bowdry assisting Traver Vleem, but, man, that defensive front, ever since those two long drives, they have really played well. We kept showing them linebacker blitz. We walked Bowdry up on the, on the line of scrimmage on one side. You had Wade on the other. And then you had uh, Reese up, or Harris pretending like he was going to blitz as well. Coastal only 16 yards of offense this quarter. Meanwhile, Georgia Southern up near 200 yards this quarter. Second down and eight shots at their 42 middle of the field. Anderson has the snap, calm pocket, looking deep middle, and that was nowhere near where it needed to be. Highly on the deep post, had Moon draped all over him. Third down and eight. Anderson looked pretty calm in the pocket, but that was just not an accurate throw down the middle. Yeah, he got tripped up. The receiver got tripped up with Vildor just a little bit. I was actually thinking he gave up on the on the route, but he actually tripped himself a little bit. Big third down for Coastal Carolina, who have not had success since the second quarter. They've missed their last five third downs, Terry. They're three of nine. 27-10, Georgia Southern leads. 3.20 is where the clock is stopped. Play clock down to five. Coastal does not have a penalty tonight. Play clock to one. They barely get the snap. Eagles bring three. Screen set up. Marable caught it. He got crunched at the 43-yard line. What a stick by Chris Harris. Second time in the game that Harris has brought every bit of his 230-pound frame. Shots have to punt with just over three minutes left in the third. Yeah, Harris read it quickly. And also, Logan Hunt lowered the boom on Anderson right as he released the ball. Drove him into the turf. And for the fifth time in a row, Coastal Carolina is having to punt. The more you see Charles Overson, the better. But this is the area of the field where a punt could be faked. Shantz faked one against ULM a couple of weeks ago for a first down. No fake this time. Overson, that's nice. a solid kick. Kennedy has already waved for the fair catch and nestles that to his chest at his own 17. 40-yard punt, 237 left in the third. The Eagles take the football back. Wesley Fields has been outstanding tonight playing in the penultimate regular season game of his fine career. 17 carries, 125 yards, two touchdowns. And with those 125 yards, he has passed Chaz Williams for 11th in rushing in school history. That says an awful lot. Talk about Chaz. He was on a some very good team with a lot of good players. Harris now the leading tackler on the night. He has eight tackles, five solos. 
That's a career high for the sophomore out of Benedictine. Two wides, three backs, Wirtz in the gun. From his own 18, first and 10, Fields on the dive, up past the 20, churns through the middle, and he knocked Heft backwards before Fields has the 24. That's a gain of six as Fields is up to 131. His career high set last year against Louisiana Lafayette was 186, and we still have 17 minutes worth of ball game, leading 27 to 10. I hope we get there. Georgia Southern has run the football 37 times for 282 yards, 7.6 yards per carry. Eagles have four carries of 20-plus tonight, including the 54-yarder by Monteo Garrett. Ten of the 11 guys are within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. Second and four for the Eagles at the 24. Wurtz pulls down the snap, fields again, ran past a tackle at the line of scrimmage. He is close to the first down up to the 28-yard line. Teron Jackson out of Aiken wrapped him up, but fields with forward lean would not go down before those chains now move. Yeah, I thought it was going to be close to the, a little bit short, but they actually said it was the first. Be thankful they were able to tackle him because there's nobody there after the back level. They actually walked a safety up, and he basically ran over his own linebacker to get to the line of scrimmage, so they had one safety back. If Fields could have broken that second level, it would have been off to the races. 130 left in the third. Georgia Southern 27, Coastal 10. Eagles at there, 28 first and 10 with two backs, two wides, and an H-back. Wesley Fields again, 30-yard line, 35, 40, still running hard. Draped a man all over him. Sterling Johnson was on for the ride. Fields up to the 41 for another Franklin first down. Starting to get downhill was Wesley Fields, playing like you would expect a senior to this late in his final campaign. Again, watching that offensive line block, taking the defenders to the right. They're moving with the linebacker, and then Fields hitting the left tackle where the open seam is. Fields three carries on this drive for 23 yards. He's up to 148 for the game. Georgia Southern now at its 41, splitting the hashes with a bunch of trips out to the left. Kennedy comes in motion quickly. Now Logan Wright. Bulls past the left hash. 40, 50. Logan Wright's loose. Far side numbers 40, 30, 25, 20. Does he run to the end zone? You betcha. Wings up, Eagle Nation. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. 59 yards for Logan Wright. The longest of his career. The route might be on in Conway. 33 to 10. You're not stopping the bull after he got those shoulders squared. And a blur of white down the far sideline. Six foot, 225 pounds, and I think he's probably a little bit more than that. That's pretty good for 59 yards. Showed some speed, too. Somebody get him some 0-2. 33-10 to 10 with 37 ticks left in the third quarter. Bass comes on for the extra point. He is true blue once more. That's 31 unanswered points for the Georgia Southern Eagles. Dominating Coastal on the road. They were once down 10-3, now on top 34-10. Queensboro National Bank and Trust has 22 branches located in the state of Georgia in the borough at 210 South Main Street. Find out why people say the Q works for me. Queensboro equal housing lender, member FD. I see. Terry Harvin, option teams have to be able to run the dive. We've seen this year effective early. Sometimes it hasn't been, but you stick with it, and eventually you get the desired results. I would say 358 yards on the ground tonight is a desired result. It, it certainly, we found something with that bend back and then off tackle because the same thing happened there. We're looking at the offensive line and how they're blocking and taking the defenders with them and then taking the cutback and able to seal it off is opening that up. Looks good. Need to keep doing it. 358 yards on the ground versus Coastal Carolina, just 65. And they have punted. The last five possessions, Coastal Carolina. After back-to-back -back losses, Georgia Southern's got some swag like Chad back here on the Grand Strand. Here's Bass's kickoff. Angling towards the far side, stays in bounds by plenty, but goes into and then out of the end zone, well over Kion Tyler's head. Eagles outscoring the shot. It clears 21-0 in this third quarter. Wesley Fields, a pair of touchdown runs, 20 carries, 148 yards. Logan Wright just exploded up the left sideline for a 59-yard touchdown. Second longest run of the year for the Blue and White. Also a 54-yarder earlier with Monteo Garrett. Our fans making their presence known here tonight. You hear the chant? God, I love that sound. I feel like we're at home. Kilton Anderson in again at quarterback for the injured Fred Payton. 
at the 25, splitting the hash marks first and 10. They fake the dive to James. Anderson swings it out right, but nowhere close to Marable's extended hands. Granted, Georgia Southern did have some pressure on the far side with Brinson and Harris, who's had a whale of a game tonight. Second down and 10. Well, the play was there. He was open the slat, slot in the uh, open field there, and he would have easily picked up seven yards, eight yards. Coastal's been behind the chains a good bit tonight. They have not completed a first down pass. They've actually done okay running the football, but they have put themselves in some tough spots this half. Trips right, press coverage on the near side with Vildor. Second and 10 at the 25. Delayed draw. Marable hit behind the line of scrimmage. Raymond Johnson, the third, has the tackle for loss at the 24. For Georgia Southern, just the third TFL of the night. Johnson, though, has been involved with two of them. And that was not a very well executed fake. I mean, he didn't sell that at all. As your quarterback, Anderson, you got to get those linebackers to think you're dropping back to a pass. He certainly didn't there. And that showed. That's the final play of the third quarter. Georgia Southern has taken the game from Coastal. First it was with defense, and now it's been with that running game. After three at Brooks Stadium, Georgia Southern 34, Coastal Carolina 10, 15 minutes away from win number eight, and a matchup with that team from Atlanta one week from now. Here in Conway, this is Georgia Southern football powered by Learfield. You're listening to the Georgia Southern Sports Network, powered by Learfield. A third quarter as Georgia Southern has had maybe all year long. The Eagles outgained the Shawna Clears 213 to 16 in the third quarter, outscoring the shots 21 nothing. And as we start the fourth from Brooks Stadium in South Carolina's Grand Strand, the Eagles 34, the Shawna Clears 10. No, the Eagles in attendance, the fans that are here, those listening on the Georgia Southern Sports Network, certainly very pleased about the outcome so far. <laughs> Need them all in Atlanta next week. Need you up there tailgating early. Yeah, bring your peanuts and Cracker Jack next week. No, oh, yeah, the old ballpark there. But... <laughs> <laughs> the old ballpark. The old ballpark. Downtown there. Atlanta. <laughs> That other school up that way, but the EFA is going to have a big tailgating going on. So is the <laughs> alumni relations. So it's going to have a good time up there. Let's just finish this one strong. Foot on the neck. All 233 yards for Georgia Southern in that quarter came on the ground as they averaged nearly 14 yards per carry. Wow. Phew. Logan Wright just ran 59 for the third touchdown of his career. Coastal begins the fourth, now moving left to right with trips to the far side. Third and 11 of the 24. Eagles bring four. Anderson brought down Raymond Johnson, the third. The Sumter, South Carolina native, wrapped him up and didn't let him free. Coastal's going to have to punt for the sixth consecutive drive. That's the fourth tackle for loss for Georgia Southern. That's going to back him up. Another eight yards. Wow, fourth and about 18, I believe. Great, great pressure on the quarterback. New career high for Raymond Johnson, the third, four and a half sacks. He had a sack and a half here a year ago. First sack of this ball game brings on Charles Overson, the sophomore, 6'2", 185, punting from his own five. Ooh, not good. And this is the worst kick he's had tonight. High, short, wobbling, get away from it. Oh, it took a great coastal hop, though, back over midfield and into the near side bench at the 45-yard line, a very fortunate bounce of about 10 yards or so. That's officially a 38-yard punt, but the shortest of the evening for Overson as the Eagle offense goes right back to work. 358 yards on the ground, 9 yards per carry. Wesley Fields, a season-high 148 yards on 20 carries, two third-quarter touchdowns. Logan Wright had the 59-yarder. He has three carries for 70 and a touchdown. Shy Wirtz a touchdown, too. Left hash at the 45, first and 10. Wirtz has the chest high snap, handing Kennedy, bouncing left, trying to get to that corner, actually hits the 50, and one yard pass to the Coastal 49 for five yards. He looked like Spider-Man, the way he wrapped around that corner and then stayed in bounds for the extra yard. Very good walking the sidelines like that. Of course, those get people over in Savannah are used to seeing him doing that from Benedictine. In his senior year, he averaged better than 10 yards a carry, the school record holder in all-purpose yards and touchdowns. 53-4 and four during his career under former Eagle Danny Britt. 
Three-man backfield at the shot of clear 49, second and five, a wide either way. Fortune left, ransom right. Wirtz, option right, broke a tackle at the line of scrimmage, 45 up the numbers, 40. Fitz Wadley brought him down at the 39. Ten more for Shy Wirtz as the Eagles are rapidly approaching 400 yards rushing for the first time in two years. I mean, Jackson did a good job initially on Shy. He was just able to break through, and he played it well. just couldn't wrap up. Think about how many broken tackles the Eagles have forced since this second half started. Some in the first half, but really more noticeable since the third quarter began. Well, we knew coming in that this defense had a lot of holes in and some areas to exploit. We certainly have so far tonight. Georgia Southern, a 34-10 lead as the Eagles miss a line on offense, and Chad Lunsford decides to call the timeout with 13.02 remaining. 34 to 10 the score as Georgia Southern has posted 31 consecutive points. This is a full timeout on the internet, so we'll step aside as well from South Carolina. This is Eagle Football powered by Learfield. You're listening to the Georgia Southern Sports Network powered by Learfield. In the middle of a called timeout as Georgia Southern has first and 10 at the 39. Well ahead, 34-10 here in Conway against Coastal Carolina. They were down 10-3 at one point, but my oh my has that Eagle defense been outstanding. First two drives of the game, the Shonda clears 15 for 75 and a touch, then 10 for 57 and a field goal. But the last seven drives, Terry Harvin, a fumbled loss, six punts, five three and outs. Those seven drives combined, 21 total plays run in seven drives, three net yards in seven drives. That's impressive. A little bit. Yep, yeah, a little bit. Wow. Well, you needed to do this going into the Georgia State game in particular. You needed to find your way after two tough losses. You're still on the revenge tour. A lot of smack talking going on. And again, talking about the recruiting area of South Carolina, you're certainly sending a message right now, aren't you? Yeah, I suspect that the social media viewing this week between the Eagle and Panther fans is going to be something to behold. Georgia Southern sets its trips out to the right. First and 10 at the Shawna clear 39. Najee Thompson comes in motion. Fly sweep to him near side with two blockers. Thompson breaks a tackle near sideline 25. Great speed for the freshman at a boiling spring, South Carolina. Out of bounds at the Shawna clear 23. That's a 16-yard reception. The first of Najee Thompson's career. Man, he ran like the track star that we're being told. You've been talking all night about Wesley Fields and his running and how much yardage he's picked up. Right there, that play happened. Wesley Fields threw a vicious block on the end right there on the edge and enabled him to cut up and pick that up. Great job, Wesley. Najee Thompson, the South Carolina State record holder in the 200 meters. He almost took that to the house. At the shot, 22, first and 10. Hand off Wesley Fields, downhill, runs past through heft, boarded backwards by Brewer. Cam Brown looking to push him back ahead, and they do so to the shot, 15 for seven more as Wesley Fields is up to 155 yards total, extending what is already a 2018 season high. Keep feeding the beast. Raw. Twelve oh five and ticking in this fourth quarter. Georgia Southern winning the battle of time of possession. They have negative one yard passing, but 351 rushing. I just realized that. <laughs> Wow. Second and three at the 15. Kennedy in motion. Wirtz fakes to Fields running right. Richardson throws the block. Wirtz running laterally to the 10 and then drags Silas Kelly an extra five yards down to the five-yard line for a Franklin first and goal. Didn't look like Wirtz was gaining a whole lot, but by keeping the separation, he helped himself even more. Yeah, you got Richardson out there as your lead block, and I thought the defender actually did a pretty good job of falling off of Richardson to wrap up Wirtz. But he didn't really wrap up. He ended up just jumping in the back seat and catching a ride. Folks, we got to check something on the negative one yards passing for Georgia Southern. The last couple of plays have been entered in as losses. So once that all gets sorted out, everything will be okay. But it is first and goal at the Shawna Clear 5. We'll get you some updated numbers momentarily. Monteo Garrett gets the carry. Monteo Garrett splits the D. He's got six. Wings up, Eagle Nation. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. It is 40 to 10 on the road in Conway. Revenge is oh so sweet, Terry Harvin. Wow. Good run right up the gut again. Picked his way through and just broke through some arm tackles. Good for Garrett. Garrett now is going to have over 70 yards. 
That's his fifth touchdown of the season. Again, these last couple of carries have been entered as losses statistically, so as soon as that gets sorted out, we will pass on the official numbers. Bass's extra point is good, 41-10 to 10 with 11.09 left, and we have a timeout on the field. Georgia Southern has turned Brooks Stadium into Paulson Stadium. Blue and white everywhere, and those towels are being flung proudly. From the Grand Strand, this is Georgia Southern football powered by Learfield. You're listening to the Georgia Southern Sports Network, powered by Learfield. Time now for the Ford scoring drive here at Georgia Southern. We go all out, not just on game day, but every day. The same is true with the Ford F-150. It works hard, never backs down. Going all out, never giving in. That's the F-150. The official truck of the Georgia Southern Eagles, Joe Smith. He's listening to it, too. Another great Georgia Southern Eagle. He loves his Ford as well. And I love them Eagles. Six plays, 54 yards. Georgia Southern stepping on the neck, so to speak. Used three minutes and one seconds. Now we're up 41 to 10 here in the fourth quarter with 11.09 to play. Starting to add more and more distance between us and Coastal Carolina. Some people like the neck meat. I know with Thanksgiving coming up, a lot of people enjoy eating the neck. Bass with another touchback. My great-grandmother would always eat the turkey neck. Well, everybody. I think most people do like to eat it all. I had some turkey this week, too. No, but I mean, she was oh, she was adamant that she be given the turkey neck. Gotcha. Collins asking me if there was a gizzard involved. I, I, I'm not sure what a gizzard is. Terry, being from the South, can, you tell, me what say, a, can you tell me what a gizzard is? We got a lot of listeners here that could. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta get you out more to eat well, different foods. Yeah, so. as far south in, in Maryland, I mean the barbecue doesn't get to a certain place. <laughs> you know uh, I mean? you guys think southern food is uh, crab cakes? They are, they are good. Anderson on the roll to the right, incomplete at the feet of Malcolm Williams, who remarkably has been held without a catch this evening. Second and 10 from the 25 with 11.04 to play in Conway. 41-10 is the Eagle lead. Okay, the gizzard, according to the interweb, a muscular, thick-walled part of a bird's stomach for grinding food, typically with grit. It's a very descriptive definition. It doesn't sound near as good as it tastes, though, especially when you deep fry it. Or at the south, you got to deep fry everything. Split backs behind. Kilton Anderson, the reserve quarterback, injured. Was the starter, Fred Payton's. That's why Anderson is into the fray. And man, it is a fray. Second and 10 on the dive fake pitch wide side, Marable. Duncan comes up from safety. Marable up to the 30, up the numbers, but tackled a yard shy of the first down at the 34. Rashad Bird out of North Augusta, South Carolina, just over the Savannah River, made the play after nine. He's a good looking running back. He's had a good year. He's just a second leading rusher on their team because Outlaw is out today, but you're only talking about a difference of a few yards. He's out of Towers High School in Decatur, Georgia. 5'10", 190-pound sophomore. Yeah, out low. Had a head injury last week against Arkansas State. Not able to play tonight. Justin Birdsong in at cornerback near side. Third down and one from the 34. James hit behind the line of scrimmage. Rashad Bird did not let him get there. Back-to-back -back tackles by the South Carolinian. And you wonder if Coastal was white, white flagging this with 10-15 left down 41-10. They've gone three and out five times in their last seven possessions. Make it six in eight as the punt team has already come on. Good to see Deshaun Cooper in on that play as well. Another one of our seniors. Georgia Southern is just taking the heart right out of Coastal. Charles Overson to punt. Wesley Kennedy has not had much of a chance to return. Overson approaches. Pretty good kick. Kennedy Man. waves for the fair catch. Racing far side numbers. Drop the football, but it goes out of bounds. May have been best served to just let that fall. I understand why he was trying to do it to save field position, though it does roll out of bounds at the 22. What a powerful leg he has, because even when it's not a pretty punt, there's tight spiral, it's going a long ways. He's averaging well over 43, 45 yards today. He was a little bit more than that. Then he had a shank on it, but he got a good roll. But he's punted now eight times. Did you do that eight for us? Eight times. Did you say that for us? What's that? You get a shank on it? Is that what you said? They say that for us? Always for us. I, I thought it was pretty out shark, but who am I? <laughs> Russ, you have to defend yourself soon. <laughs> Nine minutes. You too. 41 left. 
<laughs> up 41 to 10. LeBaron Anthony checks in and hands off to Matt LaRoche, his first carry in a while out of Venice. In Western Florida, he's up to the 28 for a pickup of six. Matt LaRoche's high school teammates play for Coastal. Quarterback Bryce Carpenter and wide receiver Javon Hiley, both out of Venice High, where they all played for former Eagle head coach John Peacock. Good to see Anthony getting some reps, the senior out of Broadwell Institute. Cam Brown, the tight end. Grant Walker is in as well at the right side running back. On second down and four from the 28, Anthony hands to Grant Walker, just his sixth carry all year, puts the shoulders low. James Heft, though, met him in the hole. Walker picks up two yards to the 30, and it's third down and a short two yards for the Eagles. Going to see plenty of new names for Georgia Southern as this one looks to be well at hand. It's still the number one offensive line in, but Grawl is checked in at center. Lawrence Edwards in there at right guard. Jake Edwards actually just came into the game as well at right tackle. 8.35 remaining, 41 to 10 the lead, 38 unanswered points for the blue and white as they have 399 yards rushing. Haven't gone for better than 400 on the ground since Savannah State two years ago. Anthony out of the shotgun, the red shirt senior, former walk-on now on scholarship. Matt LaRoche bouncing left, Franklin first down. Silas Kelly, the linebacker, made the tackle. Five more for LaRoche, 404 yards rushing for the blue and white on the road. Wow, what a production from the second quarter on. It's just been very impressive. And the stats are just totally opposite for Coastal Carolina. I mean, this is a team Coastal coming into the ball game, averaging almost 400 yards a game and 222 on the ground. And they're at 156 with 66 on the ground. They usually win the time of possession, too. Single wide right, Darion Anderson. Eagles at their 35, first and 10 left hash. Anthony the reserve with Walker and LaRoche joining him. Gallagher wrapped up LaRoche, still moves forward after a broken ankle tackle. Matt LaRoche with a fine run. He's up to the 40-yard line for a gain of five. This is the time where someone like Matt LaRoche can make these garbage time carries, meaningful carries, with two games left this season. Now they're bringing a redshirt freshman guard, Peyton Backer, 6'3", 290. Former walk-on out of Raven County. Raven County, good area. Tiger, Georgia. What do you know about Tiger, Georgia? Not a thing, except for it says <laughs> Tiger, Georgia. It sounded like I did up there in the yes, foothills of North Georgia. There you go. Sounded like I did. Rob Stockton. There you go. Great eagle up there. He sells Ford trucks, too. Second and five of the 40. LaRoche, another carry. Jawaski Webb checks in for just the second time all year at left tackle as LaRoche put, but kept his eyes up to gain four more up to the 44. Third down and one. 6.40 left. This drive began with 9.41 after Overson's punt. 41-10 the lead. A dominant, dominant performance. Exactly what the Eagles need with those inner city kiddies ready for the Eagles up in Atlanta next week. I said it. You said it. Grant Walker, Matt LaRoche change positions. This is a long yard, maybe a short two. DJ Butler into the game as the H-back. Grant Walker the carry. Ooh, took a good Walker hit. lunging for the first. The ball good came job. free, but Walker's knee was down. And we're going to have to check that spot to see if it's a first. Terry, which point now? Uh, the referee on the far side, the Coastal, had it ball spotted at the 45. The referee, the line judge on the Georgia Southern, came up and backed it up about a half yard to make it short. Yeah, this is fourth down and about an achoo. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. We're going to punt. Daniel, one yard brings up fourth down and one. And you got this is our third time punting on the night, averaging just 32 yards, but one of them getting inside the 20 yard line. So hopefully Miguel will get a good foot in the ball. They look like they're coming after him. They bring six. Bowerly gets it away. This is a really good punt. Tyler makes the fair catch, actually goes down and away. Catcher squat to pull it in at the 14. 42 yard punt for Bowerly with 522 to play with a 41 to 10 Eagle lead. That's a good point. Didn't even think about that for Turner Field. <laughs> Let's go down to Russ Brown real quick, quickly. Russ, what do you got? Uh, well, I, I tell you, it's been a fun night. The, the sideline, the energy has been there all night long, obviously now with this game out of hand. 
late in the fourth quarter, a lot of smiles, a lot of the young guys getting a chance to play. This is just what this team needed after two losses, right? Uh, you just you bounce back, you get that taste out of your mouth. The offensive line has, has played probably their best game in the season tonight. And really, ever since that second possession, Coastal's offense has done absolutely nothing. I can't wait to catch up with Chris Harris in the post game <laughs> and talk to him about what the defense was able to do to make the adjustment. I mean, you mentioned Harris. He's having a career night. He's had eight tackles, five solos. Next closest is Bird with four and three solos. And, of course, talk about Johnson. He's another one that's right there with him. He's not only got a sack involved, he's got two tackles for loss. Timeout on the field with 522 left with Georgia Southern on top of Coastal 41 to 10. From Conway, this is Eagle Football powered by Learfield. You're listening to the Georgia Southern Sports Network powered by Learfield. 41 10 lead for Georgia Southern over the Coastal Carolina. Shauna clears. Quick look on the out of town scoreboard. Duke with a 3 0 lead over number two Clemson with two minutes to go in the first quarter. Danny? Thank you, Colin. Coastal after the punt, that snap looked like it may have been mishandled initially from Anderson, though the dive did get given to Pinson. Baden Pinson, the fourth string running back in for the Shauna Clears, as we mentioned, this one has pretty much been decided with now approaching five minutes to play, and the Eagles up 41-10, a gain of two yards for Pinson. Just his fifth carry all year, 210-pound redshirt frosh out of Cincinnati, Queen City. Great chili up there. Got a lot of new numbers in the ball game, including Justin Birdsong at corner. Monquavian Brinson still in at far side corner as we get ready for second and eight from the 15. Hairston motions out of the backfield left. Anderson to throw beat Ward. There's the sack. Logan Hunt. Fifth of the season for Hunt. Third sack of the night for Georgia Southern after being sacked less the previous two weeks. Third down and 14 with 424 to play. Came on the left side with a lot of pressure. He steps up in the pocket, and there's Hunt to drag him down. Since coming in for Fred Payton, Kilton Anderson is just one of four passing for one yard. Late substitution in at receiver for Coastal. Jay Williams, the kickoff returner, a slot right, four wides total. Third and 14 for the shots at their 10. Georgia Southern, 41-10 lead. Joe Boglia wants a timeout as Ward jumps, but I think the timeout may have gotten called first. He threw the flag anyway. It was simultaneous. He was wanting timeout. The flag got thrown, but what got called first as the clock stops with 3.56 left? The right tackle also jumped, but he might have been drawn off. Ethan Howard, 6'6", tackle there. He's the lone junior on that line. It looks like the timeout got called. There is no foul for offside. Coastal Carolina call a timeout. On that note with penalties, Danny, I want to point something out. The referees have let them play tonight. Uh, no penalties called against Coastal Carolina tonight and only two against Georgia Southern for 17. Now, both those penalties were pretty costly in the first quarter. One enabled the extra point to be re-kicked. He missed the first one. They got the seven points. Another one uh, was a chop block that brought the run back by Fields. But other than that, the Yankees really haven't been on the field tonight. The referees have done a good job of just letting them play. And when I say good job, they've also let them play without letting tempers get out of hand. See who we've got in for Georgia Southern that's new. Alvin Ward Jr. has checked in. C.J. Wright, Josh Johnson. Linebacker Ben's Josue is in. Trey Allen is in. Birdsong, as Terry mentioned, Kendrick Duncan, Daryl Baker in the secondary. This is third and 14 from the 10. Anderson steps up, avoiding the sack across the middle. Highly caught it at the 25. Hosway pulls him backwards, but a first down towards the 30. That was nearly an interception for the Eagles, but a 20-yard completion on third and 14 moves the chains. Watch the center uh, judge there. He had to get out of the way in a hurry. It was also tipped at the line of scrimmage somehow. The umpire had to jump quickly. 3.30 3.30 to play. Georgia Southern 41, Coastal 10. Eagles out gaining the Shauna Clears 445 to 172. Remember, Coastal only had 16 yards of offense the entire third quarter. That's Coastal's first first down of the quarter. Anderson, the gun snap, fakes to Harrison, looking down the middle, incomplete. Oh, he just missed that. He had a... He got behind Hostway. Wide open, wide, a receiver there, and he might have taken that 70 yards. Just off his fingertips. Anderson showing a little rust as he's been on the sidelines. 
Intended for Josh Anderson, as Terry mentioned, somebody that's been out the last four games due to injury. Second and ten. It's fun to nominate somebody. It's even better to do it in their house. Pistol formation. Hairston in behind Anderson. Hand off Hairston. Broke a tackle at the line of scrimmage. Chris Harris has an ankle. Kendrick Duncan hit a shoulder. He's up to the 36 is Jaquez Hairston. Six-yard gain. Third and four for the Shawna Clears. Under three to play at Brooks Stadium. There's no doubt that Georgia Southern's going to pick up that eighth win of the season and all but lock up a bowl bid somewhere. But right. now you can start thinking about Georgia State next Saturday. You gotta beat Georgia State. You gotta finish strong. You gotta beat that school up there in the baseball field next week. And then hopefully we'll either be, it looks like we'll either be in Montgomery or Mobile. Third and four from the 36, middle of the field. Anderson against the six-man rush throwing. Right almost pick off of Justin Birdsong's right hand. I think he may have ended up going out of bounds had he pulled in the pick. But on fourth and four with 2.22 to play, Coastal to punt again. Stepped into the pass when he threw it. He just threw it behind his receiver. A very frustrated receiver. He was looking for Javon Hiley. That is Coastal Carolina's eighth consecutive punt. I'd like to know when we've done that before. All right, I can tell you a lot of things. I can't tell you that. Here's Overson's oh, punt. This is a great goodness. punt. That's from his own 36, well over Kennedy's head, approaching the near sideline, skips inside of the 15. That was really well done. It goes out of bounds at the 12. 52-yard punt for Overson, second tonight that he's had a 50 or more. Goodness. He's had two inside the 20, two over 50 yards. Going to be averaging, probably finish the night averaging about 45 yards a punt. Look who's coming in to play quarterback for Georgia Southern. The freshman Justin Tomlin out of Southwest DeKalb is about to take his first career snap. Well, and the he's new gonna, rule allows it, that to happen, right? Correct. Every freshman gets four games and can preserve that red shirt year. This is Tomlin's first career appearance. LaRoche and Walker with him in the backfield. Butler is the H-back right with 2.13 to play. The snap got fumbled. Oh, and Coastal recovered it. Teddy Gallagher, the linebacker, just the fifth turnover all season for Georgia Southern. And the first one tonight. Man. And that gives Coastal the football to Georgia Southern 11. My goodness. Possibly a little bit of jitters, possibly a cold football. Yeah. Tomlin never had a clean grasp of it. They hit him right in the hands, a little bit high to the left of his head, just above his shoulder. He just didn't grip it. Nerves not looking it in. He's going to look back at that, his first snap as a quarterback, and that's what it is. And certainly something to learn from. My very first punt was blocked. Well, actually, I was roughed, and then the next one was blocked. What about your four-yard punt? Well, that happened later in life. Well, later that day. No, it wasn't that game. <laughs> first and ten for Coastal at the Eagle 11 after the fumble. Likely in as the H-back left. Quarterback Anderson fakes it, looking down the middle, incomplete. Crossing route for Hiley, Justin Birdsong. Right there, about three yards deep in the end zone. Second and ten with 2.04 left. And you know that Georgia Southern wants nothing more than to get the stop here because Coastal, they want to punch one in for a little bit of confidence in the final game for these seniors. But As Georgia Southern doesn't want them in the end zone. No, granted, you get you get them, they got to go for it here. you got two minutes to play in this ball game. Get your points off your turnovers and see if we can do a good job of keeping them from scoring. I mean, their average rush has just been 2.1 yards per game, per, uh, per, per carry. Anderson hands to Hairston on second and 10 from the 11. Hairston bouncing left. Trevor Bleem and Kendrick Duncan come in as Hairston touches down at the five-yard line. Hairston got quite a few touches in garbage time a week ago. Ran for 51 yards against Arkansas State. 5'7 sophomore from Martinsville, Virginia, and Magna Vista High School. 140 left. Good run again, though. They got just four yards, third down and four. They've had 14 third down attempts. This will be number 15. And remember, at one point, they were three of four on third down. They're one of their last 10. Had to punt all the time. Press coverage far side. Brinson matching up against Hiley. Third and four at the five. Anderson throwing left, likely makes the catch. He already has one touchdown. 
but Kendrick Duncan keeps him well away from the pylon. Actually spot him out of bounds way back at the four, so only a one-yard reception for Isaiah Likely. Freshman, 6'4", 225 out of Everett High and Malden, Mass. Fourth down, two yards to go. Coastal's going with a minute 13 left. Anderson in the gun, Harrison behind him into the right as Hiley comes in motion off left tackle. Spinning handoff fake, looking end zone wide open touchdown. Got likely for the second time in the game. That was a well-designed play. Georgia Southern was all over the dive, but the fake and likely wide open in the back of the end zone cuts the deficit to 41 to 16 with 108 to play. Wow, that was a good-looking play right there. Sucked them all in. He was wide open. He did a little Tim Tebow-like jump. We were talking about third-down conversions. They've only converted one in the second half. Yeah. All three came in, or three came in the first half. One came in they had the four, second. They had four first downs on that first drive as well, only seven since. Biscardi coming on for the extra point. Low trajectory on the knuckler. But it splits the bars for a 41-17 Georgia Southern lead. Rashad Bird blew up that die fake to Hairston, but nobody accounted for likely in the back of the end zone. And to continue on that third down, they had two in the first quarter. Yeah. So they've amounted two first third down conversions in three quarters of play. The defense is really, the offense obviously, you have to look at that. The Coastal broke down on their tackles and everything else, but the defense has certainly stepped up. That's the first points off a turnover that Georgia Southern's allowed all season. And this is the 11th game of the season. Really? Yeah. Wow. Well, only turned it over four times before the think bobble about, of the snap. Think about what you just said there. This is a predominantly a rushing team. Correct. And they've only had four turnovers. That being five, but that's still, that, that's a crazy number. It is. Crazy number. All right, you got the good hands people in there right now all lined up expecting something crazy here. You. Eagle Nation, we do remind you coming up in just a couple of moments, Georgia Southern men's basketball taking on Pepperdine down to the Bahamas. You can catch the full call on gseagles.com with Kevin Fitzgerald filling in for the next couple of days. That's a ground ball kick as the Eagles were expecting something onside. And it roly polies its way into the end zone for the touchback. Georgia Southern should be a couple of kneel downs away from a 41 to 17 road victory against Coastal. Georgia Southern fans still here. Doesn't look like any of them have left the stadium. Maybe a few, but not much. It's amazing when it's 45 degrees, but when you're winning, not you don't even feel it. Nah, don't feel it. Good to see the band down there as well. Now, Shy Wirtz has come back into the ball game to take the victory formation snaps. Fields and Garrett surround him. Kennedy, 15 yards back. There's the first knee. Georgia Southern going to have to do that one more time before win number eight becomes official. Just one more time. That's right. My friend Dewey Holloman's here, and he's reminding me that just one more time. He's chanting behind us. Enjoy talking to him with the Letterman's Lounge today, former cheerleader, 85, 86 national championship teams. You being a basketball nut, he was there when uh, we almost took down Syracuse in the NCAA tournament. The, the picture of Georgia Southern in the Carrier Dome 31 years ago is a classic, classic picture. Ronnie Sykley was on that Syracuse team? Yes, he was. One more snap, Wurtz takes the knee. And for Georgia Southern, today was just a day at the beach. It is well with my soul in Conway. The Eagles take down Coastal in dominant fashion. 41 to 17, improving to 8 and 3 on the year. 5 and 2 in Sunbelt Conference play. Coastal falls to 5 and 6. They've got one more shot to become bowl eligible as next week they head to South Alabama to close the season in Mobile. Eagles with a season-high 409 yards rushing, first time since the 2016 opener against Southall. They won over 400. Wesley Fields pacing everybody with 148 yards on 20 carries and two touchdowns. Monteo Garrett had 75 yards in a score. Logan Wright had 72 yards in a score. Wesley Kennedy ran for 59. Shy had 38 and a first-half touchdown. And at one point, the Eagles scored 38 unanswered points as win number eight is official, and so too should be that bowl bid which awaits the Eagles in just over a week.
And again, I have to think it's going to be Montgomery or Mobile because the winner announced this week that the winner of the Sun Belt Championship will definitely play in New Orleans. Correct. More than likely, if I had to guess, it's going to be Troy or App State. So that's going to open up Mobile or Montgomery, who certainly won us, as does the Cure Bowl. Terry and I offer some final thoughts after the timeout after Georgia Southern's resounding 41-17 win here in Conway on a chilly Saturday in the Grand Strand. And my, was it grand tonight for the blue and white. This is Georgia Southern football powered by Learfield.